The Uber Ownage. Thank you for subscribing. Gaming Fun. Digital Shadow. I like every single one of those last three names. They are excellent. Now, hello and welcome, everybody. I'm One Proud Bavarian, and this is Crusader Kings 2. We're going to play some multiplayer today, and by multiplayer, I mean I'm going to watch. Um, going to pull a Drew Donnell, and then the players are going to try and go from all the way over here and down here as well, and let me actually change the screen here. Going all the way from Europe and Africa into India, the goal is to conquer as much of the island of Lanka, only the island this time around, as you can. And as you can see, there are four players defending India and Lanka from the European players, so let's see how that goes. Welcome everybody to the stream, both the people playing and of course you, dear viewer, yes, just you individually, I have addressed you at this very moment. What are we going to do today? Hopefully watch uh, people fight a lot. But we'll see how it goes. It is a random world, and this random world essentially is a bit chaotic, as you can see. C Catholicism goes all the way from Lanka to Kolguyev. Uh, Isn't that the dream? Whereas Germanic is right over here. There are only one player allowed per team that is Germanic. Everybody else has to be of a different religion, and whenever some team reforms a religion, they also get the right to that religion, meaning everybody else has to convert away. But that aside, as you can see, we have a lot of players. We're gonna dive into those teams in a second, a bit later on. Let me just ready up. Welcome everybody in chat. Uh, let me put on my gamer goggles, as you do. Sonny, Hermann, Maximilian, Harold, one brother uh, Iranian, nice to see all of you. I forgot. There you go. We need just Labon to ready up, and then we can actually jump in. There is one player missing. Yes, that is right. One player had to sadly leave. That was down here in Africa. It was Drog, a very well-known person on in these games. Good min mixer. Ah, oh, there we go. Everybody is readied up. Beautiful. Now you know how it is, first five minutes are the teams doing their thing, I let them do their thing, and then uh, we'll go from there. Dab, just did it, welcome to the stream. Everyone declare war on Hakim. <laughs> uh, classic moment. You know, people outside of the Discord of this channel don't actually know this, but there is a community-driven mega campaign currently running that had its first session yesterday. Five minutes prep time. And pause. No pausing by anyone, any players. Thank you. Alright, let's go over the teams, and I actually have to go over them myself. So, what I know is that Moray over here, then we have a... Uh, what is this? Essex? I think so. And of course, Yeland and Wonderful Galicia. All of those are players of the pink team. Let me actually open the map. We have a map for this. We have a map for everything. Now, this map isn't entirely accurate, but I'm, I'm just going to keep it on my on the right side of the screen so that I can actually go through it, okay? Then we have the gray team in Bohemia, Croatia, Ragusa, that's the Merchant Republic, and then down here in Athens. We have the green team in Thrace, Sicily, Sardinia, and then over here in Barcelona, the orange team are all of these people down here. The yellow team, sadly only three people, but they are only three people and get to play this great conqueror, which, you know, gives them a good bloodline. Look at this, um, personal combat skill is quite nice. They, uh, they, they are in a pretty good position here, I think, with this great conqueror. What else? What other teams do we have? We have the blue team right here, these two, and then these two. And I think that is almost it. There is one more that I want to mention. There is a team that lives over here. The team that lives in Venice. Peach, Captain Simcoe, Dangle, and Ascoldia. They, the absolute madmen, only play in Venice. Every single one of their players is in Venice. <laughs> Every single one of them is in Venice. Wolfstone. Um, subjugation is allowed, but I believe that this is a Shattered World thing. He's asking in the chat, is subjugation not allowed? It is allowed, except this is Shattered World, so you have to work with a Consolidation CB. This is true. And then over here we have four players, of course. Swiss Kant, Talos, War Machine, and Hakim, the winners of the last multiplayer game from last week. Uh, they have to defend Lanka. Last time they conquered Lanka. Now they are defending. And you know what? 
you didn't know this, but I have music in the game off right now. What you're hearing in the background is actually a YouTube video playing. There we go. <laughs> now it's real music. It is real music indeed. We had some substitute players, as it always is. Uh, we found one for every team except for Africa down here. But that is fine. Again, they have the Great Conqueror down there. We are going to lose a player over here. I think it is Labond, indeed, that has to leave later on. Uh, I, I already heard that one proud Iranian. By the way, I love this naming convention uh, catching on. That will be substituted later on. We will make a pause every hour or so. And we will have three hours of pure playtime uh, play in this evening. And then whoever is closest to Lanka will win. That's the winning condition. If you hold land and you hold the most land in Lanka, then you also win. If two people hold the same la amount of land uh, in Lanka, then, you know, it's a, it's a draw. They can, they can deal with it in a bit of a, a dwarf duel, I guess. All right. And now we are pause. Let's go. Let's see. I hope nobody... These things early here. There's no music though, there is music. I believe uh, you can hear it. New Deus X is the Thrace player. I can see, I see. Achieve Batan. Ian. In control of Thrace. Now let's just take a look. I think somebody... Yeah, it's Shrek. Shrek is having a couple of issues. This is always how it starts out. Once they catch up, it is commonly quite alright. I think we're at a point where it is alright. Oh, Shrek's still behind. Let me just... Uh, take a moment here to appreciate that. But I think he's slowly... You know... <laughs> we have done like two days. <laughs> Shrek. How's everybody doing tonight, anyway? I've been having a great afternoon. Um, a great day, actually. Quite sunny outside here in Bavaria. Although, of course, you know, I haven't really been outside. You know what's going on. Corona has us in its iron grip. I hope everybody's healthy, and I hope everybody stays healthy. Hmm. Breck, what is up with you? They already declared a war, that's interesting. So they're already going for a war against Peru uh, Perugia here. But we can't really do that if he doesn't catch up. And my god, he just doesn't catch up. I think we may have to... Uh... Oh, look at that, there's already a battle going on here, interesting. I think that's just Croatia and Ragusa working together to do it. Now, the thing that I'm looking at... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give him one chance here, and if it doesn't work out in a second, then I'm going to go ahead and going to ask him to leave the game, because of course that is just too much of a slowdown. It is of course sad for his team, but look at that, he's still on the 27th, I think we'll have to accept that he's not going to be able to play today. Ah, oh, there he goes, you know what? Maybe he fixed it. Yeah, he did it! You know, just a bit of patience did it. So the early wars here, as always, are, of course, you know, mostly for consolidation. Mostly to uh, get rid of some of the enemies. You can see that... Oh, interesting. Wait, what? Oh, no, okay, yeah. Ragusa and Croatia are beating up on the AI here together. They are, of course, teammates. Uh, everybody has it now together when it comes to the game speed, it seems. So what is the general plan? I have seen, I've monitored the... What is this? Why are you independent? Ah, Revoke Prague. I have seen, you know, some of the plans of the teams. There are very different teams. Some want to reform a religion, for example, Sumonesco or Burn or even African. I, I've seen so many plans. Uh, others want to reform Ramuva or Tengri. Others just want to, you know, convert to Islam and as Muslims then be able to holy war their way into here, over there. Um, some want to make infinite money as merchant republics. I mean, we have it here in wonderful, wonderful... Uh, Venice, where the players all stand together and need to make things happen. Now, I can see right now that Venice has a huge army, and Venice, the mayor of Venice, which is an AI, is pushing for Treviso. I think they, they want the actual province, yeah, Treviso here. So the early, the early days of this MP are primarily just, you know, people blobbing out, and let me, you know, this gives me a chance, I think, to just turn around and re-chat a bit. We need music, definitely no music. Um... 
that maybe it's a software bug then, because there's definitely music on, on like, the, uh, the, the display here. That is very odd. Let me listen into the actual stream. Give me one moment. I can definitely uh, see the music going there. Let me listen in. Oh yeah, you're right, no music. How does that happen? Um, I don't know what's going on there. Give me a moment. I want to figure that one out. The game can still run, there's not much happening here. Let me just... Maybe I have to restart the stream. Oh, I know what it is. Oh, I know what it is. Let's go. Okay, easy money. We can fix that. There you go. And I think now you have music. Isn't that true? Let me know. I believe music has returned. Slippery Cypher doing a good job at making people forget that there was no music. Dum 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 dum. I believe the music should have now arrived. I'm not mistaken. Damn. Yeah, who's, who's lagging behind? Aiden, out of all people. Lucky. Let me actually just check that. So that I can see whether there is music. I'll just do it myself. It should be there now. And if not, then I will have to restart the stream. Dum 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 dum. That was about right. We did it. Music. Who could have known? All right, beautiful. Now, as I said, the early days here will primarily be in people expanding. Shrek already expanded, and to think that he was almost kicked out. You know, what he doesn't know, doesn't really concern him. Oh, what happened here? In favor of High Chieftain Lemiki the Legendary, so I think the player just trashed Urumba here, Song High that is. Yeah, they just got trashed by the armies of this Great Conqueror players, which again is the only Great Conqueror uh, walking around. They got absolutely smashed to pieces actually, I mean how can you resist against 3.5k uh, troops and all belonging to Gurma only? That is of course quite powerful, but with only being three players, having a player to player war is very much more difficult. Because player to player wars, you know, include everyone bringing their levies, and if you only have three levy sources, then you can quickly get cut off. Other than that, what I'm curious of, and I actually need to check here. We have a couple of Germanic players. There is a rule where every team can merely have one Germanic player. Whiskant lagging behind here. My god. Still the 20th, uh, 29th. I gotta tell you. Once CK3 comes out, some of you will have to buy new computers. Because it, uh... <laughs> and Akeem is writing. Not me lagging. For the first time. For the first time. He is not lagging. Yeah, we got some other problem uh, cases here today, I think. Come on, Swiss cunt. Iranian, of course it is okay if you come back in 30 minutes. Don't you worry about it. Take your time. This can slowly but surely catching up. My god. <laughs> I'll take great pleasure in removing you from India. That's the spirit. <laughs> the in-game chat is, is something else. But yeah, I'm looking... I'm very much looking forward to... Um, what we have up, you know, for grabs, really, like, what, what is coming up in the next week. We're going to take a look at the next development diary of Crusader Kings 3. It has been quite the contentious topic, and for, for good reason. I mean, don't get me wrong here. Initially, when they announced Crusader Kings 3, and by the way, we're going to focus on the game in just a couple of minutes. Um, but, you know, right now, everybody's just kind of blobbing locally, and there isn't really much that we can say about it. If you lose your first war against the AI, then you probably should have never attended. Nothing against you, though. If you do lose, I hope that you still had a great time. And Swiss Khan's still lagging behind. My god. Hmm. The topic of the Byzantines is something that is often discussed. First of all, I want to say... First of all, I want to say that um, 
I'm very happy about how many people under the Dev Diary video for Crusader Kings 3 said, Hey, I would really like to see a testament idea in, in Gablekind. And uh, there you go. Finally, I post. My God, Kaiser Matthew, don't do that again. I swear to God. Um, I, I'm very happy about that. I think it's a good idea. I think it should be implemented. I don't think it will be, but I really would hope for it to be there. Now, either way, uh, what is the more contentious topic is the Byzantines. And I actually very much agree with it. I wholeheartedly agree, you know, when it comes to that topic. Uh, we are facing a situation that I didn't think would happen. Because when they announced CK3, they clearly very early on said Merchant Republics and Horse Lords will not be in because they just weren't what we wanted. And that is fair. I completely understand that. But the fact that they didn't bring up the Byzantines at the start made me and many others believe that the Byzantines would have their unique government system and whatever else there is. Now, it turns out that it is, you know, it appears quite likely that that won't be the case. That the Byzantines will operate under feudal uh, government rules. All right, you know what? You gotta, gotta knock it out. And if the Byzantines don't get any unique mechanics, it would be very saddening for me. At least on launch. It would be incredibly saddening to me, because all we're looking at is one of the most important realms, of course, at the time. You know, the Byzantine Empire, both between Western Christianity and then uh, Islam, not in a position of actually having its unique properties simulated. I don't think that Swiss can't, uh, can fix this, meaning that he will have to leave. Because this uh, is too slow, far too slow. So for me personally, the, the latest Death Diary in itself was pretty cool. I think there's, there's some very good stuff in there. But ultimately, if it is confirmed, which it hasn't been, not 100% at the very least, if it is confirmed that we are looking at a situation where uh, Crusader Kings 3 does not start out with the Byzantine government, then I will be very distraught. It's, it's something that I just had calculated in 100%. And Swiss Gun has left the game, although it uh, doesn't appear that he has. Let me just speed that up just a tiny little bit. Maybe there you go. Continue. And let's hopefully continue with a uh, regular speed here. Now, with that being said, I'm still excited for CK3. Don't know where it's going. I am also very excited for Knights of Honor 2 Sovereign. My god. Very happy about what I've seen so far about that game in particular. Didn't one of the developers say that they want to work on a unique government type for the Byzantines rather than a reskinned elective? They did, and I agree. That is, a, It's a good choice. Imperial elective and the Imperial government do not actually reflect how the Byzantines work. They are the closest approximation that we have at this point, but... Since they didn't mention that it wouldn't be in at launch, I thought it would be in at launch. I understand that they have to rework it, I understand that this takes man hours, but I thought that... You know, we would be uh, at a point where it is releasable on release. Uh, one of the developers said that they, whenever they are getting to it, they want to they wanna do something special with it. And the problem with that is to me, again, that uh, he says, or that they say, whenever they're getting to it. So right now, it doesn't sound like, you know, they've gotten there. Hey, look at that. Big blobbing by Lucky Lucas. That is a good war right here. What happened? A subjugation war. So down here, apparently subjugations work because it is into a different religion, if I'm not mistaken. At the very least, what, he, uh, what was conquered here was under the rule of a different religion. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so the subjugation actually worked out right there. Would you want China, Asia, other parts of the map in the map or DLC in the game? So this is a fairly unpopular opinion, but I believe that we should get a China scenario. So a, a Far East scenario, essentially. Because I do think that it is a very cool time. Uh, they created Sengoku. Nobody has played that, of course, uh, especially because all of you are... Uh, Zoomers, whereas I am a boomer in internet time. And I've played Sengoku, it's a, a prototype for CK2, let's be honest here. But I would like to see a game similar to that, except Asia needs very specifically different mechanics. Dylan, thank you for becoming a subscriber. Um, very different mechanics than, you know, a game set in Europe. And I would rather have it on a its own specific map than on a very large map that then, you know, lags more, that has more government types, that may be harder to maintain, that sort of stuff. So I would definitely prefer it if they just did a scenario. I, I would play it, though. Definitely, I would definitely play it. 
DK3 is gonna suck, we all know how we're feeling. Ah, uh, honestly, I, I don't think so. I think CK3 does a lot of things right, where it just straight up does exactly what needed to be done to make it all better. The problem with CK3 is that you're porting a, a game of eight years into new concepts in, in terms of games. And I, I understand, you know, this takes time and, and whatnot. Again, I'm just mostly uh, distraught by this one thing, by the Byzantine Empire, because I thought it would be in. Um... You know, when you think about it, feudal contracts, the way religions will work, where you can have your own tenets, your own heresies, everything like that, all of that is very well done. That's exactly what we need. Who cool in? Thank you for becoming a, a new subscriber. Oh, Blaze VVV as well, and the. No, Uber Owner, we already talked about it. It's still a good name. So, all of those, I can definitely see being way better than anything we have in CK2. I love reformations in CK2, for example, but I think personal tenets and changing, you know, values of religion, that sort of stuff, I think that will make the game 10 times more amazing. First player death over here, I think. Wait a minute. Peach, what are you doing? Give me a moment. Where's Peach? Oh, no. Oh, no. Is Venice dying? Oh, they're killing Ragusa. They are killing Ragusa. Ragusa is a player, Hulk and playing Ragusa may be kicked out very early on here. Oh wow. So Venezia is kicking out one of the great team members, if great team lets it happen. He has the, uh, the support of the yield to seed uh, duchy, which is this one right here. Oh, that is a smart move. All the players, we mentioned this before, there is just one entire team in Venice. That is an entire team. And they took over the Republic now and are immediately going in. Wow, I did not expect such an overly aggressive, very early war. And by the looks of it, I don't know why, but it does not appear to me that Croatia is actually intervening there. I mean, how do you fight off 5k troops, I suppose? But my god, they may actually kill one of the great players right away. First of all, very rude. Second of all, uh, very effective. And look at that, Charlemagne has already blobbed over here. Now further blobbing into Anastrias, uh, making their way towards, making their way down uh, downtown because it is Friday. Uh, I mean, not even that, but looking good over here. They can control of the Black Sea coast. Sicily in the meantime. Oh, Sicily died. How did that happen? To cancer at the age 29. I vote. Team, uh, I want to be an engineer, The or Team Green, I want to be an engineer, one of the unluckiest people alive, and Talos just perished as well. Now, I gotta actually take a look at that. Talos, right? What happened here? What happened with Talos? He was in Team Purple. And Team Purple now reduced to two players, the Defenders of India. Uh, let me just see if they're ever gonna rejoin here. P -p purple. I think they may rejoin, but honestly, I'm going to leave the, the purple AI to its own devices because they aren't that important at this moment, being as they are still fairly isolated over there. Hello, Yazid. Nice to see you. Um, get your pockets ready. We'll have to pay Byzantine DLC. Okay, I want to point one thing out. I, I do, you know, I get it. People are like, oh, why do I have to pay? But you gotta see in CK2, and I'm not saying that because I don't know anything, let's be really, about the content in CK3 or about the DLC model, but you gotta see when you entertain the idea of paying for developing a game further for eight straight years, you gotta pay for that somehow. Did you? Oh, I think maybe revoking. Oh, did he actually lose that? That is super. No, he won it. Okay. Good for him. Um, you gotta take a look at actually paying for that. You, you don't get around a DLC model if you want to have uh, eight years of support. I, I think that has to be mentioned. I, I don't think DLC per se are the devil. I, I don't think that's a thing at all. It's just for me, again, very, very disappointing because I, I was under the impression that, you know, nothing was against having the Byzantines in at the game release or on game release. And look at that Aiden now blobbing over here. I wonder what the plan is. Who creates a kingdom and who... Gets to be a vassal of that kingdom. Moray, um, fighting off a rebellion. And honestly, that rebellion looks fairly strong. Oh, wow. They actually had about equal numbers as Moray, but Moray got them here in uh, and a good battle. They were split up. Now, the question is, will they beat them up before they arrive? Nope. So, we continue with the hills modifier here, but Moray has it under control. Good for the player. Good for... Uh, Raptor 1 no. I do want to mention, by the way, if you are interested in playing multiplayer games in Crusader Kings 2, or in any game, for that matter, that is a map game, check out the Discord, because the way it works is that we have, um, 
a community game going. Yesterday was the first session. That community game is uh, a grand campaign, and they're going to play a bit more this week, a bit more every Friday. And they're going to play Crusader Kings 2, and then EU4, and then, you know, Victoria 2, and whatever else comes next. And who is lagging behind? It is Luki Max, isn't it? Yeah. All right, has fixed itself, though. Is there a chance that CK3 will be better released than CK2 now? I gotta be I gotta be honest with you. I I do not share the opinion of chat. It's always <laughs> it's always a gamble when you stream and like you oppose the opinion of chat. Um I think every single system that they have explained, from focus trees uh to war, to uh, the feudal contracts, to law changes, to powerful vessels, every single system that is in the game is demonstrably better than CK2. I could literally do a three hour long video where I just detail why CK2 sucks. And I say this as someone that loves CK2. I play CK2 every day. I've played CK2 every day for about two years, maybe three years at this point. Um, I mean, you know, before that I also played it, but not as frequently. I play it every day. It is an amazing game. It has incredible replayability. It's, it's a great, great game. But there are so many flaws with the systems and how they display reality, how they display what was going on back in the day. And every single system that was explained to us in CK3's Dev Diaries is significantly better than anything we have in CK2. So I gotta tell you, um... Ah... Ah, okay, I see. Thomas dropped here. Uh, we are going to rehost in just half an hour, so this shouldn't be too... bad. See, I'm looking at this and I'm not seeing the same blobbing. Maybe it's just because we haven't spent so much time, but we gotta wait for some blobbing here. I actually think, uh, when you look at it, they are doing everything right in the features that are in the game. So acting like, oh, Suke 2 will be always better. It's just, you know, I get it, like, you do it because that's what the cool kids do. But at the end of the day, it's just, you know, categorically untrue when it comes to the implemented feature. Uh, features. It will suck to not have certain unimplemented features, but the implemented features are a huge, huge improvement to CK2. The grand campaign is going swimmingly, and also for those interested, it is realm size limited and very RP heavy. Expected I'm also able to watch this stream, thankfully. Yes, the grand campaign again. Join the Discord, check out the different roles, you know, ask around how to join the grand campaign. It is organized by Tara, a member of the community, and played by, well, many in the community itself. And I'm gonna join that grand campaign at some point, you know, I'm gonna phase in and phase out, uh, depending on how time allows it. But that, 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 that looks like great fun. Actually, let me see if I can pull up the... Uh, Screenshot of yesterday. My god, there was a lot of blobbing from what I heard. Um, give me a moment here. Organization. I think that is where it's posted, right? The the screenshot of the map. Yeah, there we go. Check this out, guys. So I, I have a map ready here that I can paste into my streaming software. Hulk just disconnected. I think Hulk just died. Wow. Ragusa has been taken out, and that is a huge blow to the great team because it means that they no longer have their source of income. That is incredibly rude, but also, again, incredibly effective. Um, so, give me one moment here, right? Um, I want to take a look at this. I have it right here. There you go. So, these were the starting positions. Let me sh let me see if I can adopt it to the stream a bit better. These were the starting positions of players in the Grand Campaign yesterday. You can see a bit of India right here. And I'm going to make this smaller. Even at this point. We need to speed the game up, yes. Oh, look at this. This was yesterday's session, the first session, and then this is how it ended. So much blobbing. My goodness. I have to give my religion. I have to see the religious changes to give my final impression of CK3. Yeah, I agree. It, it is that is such an important part of the entire game. Um, I think it will be good just because like CK2 is really. Look, I love CK2. Again, I always need to say this. I played every day. All right, but religion, you know, it could be so much better. <laughs> it could be so much better, and I think uh, you can't really go wrong by changing it up a lot. You know, I, I love. Listen, I love religion, but it's a very static system in CK2. Over 500 years, Catholicism has the same tenets. Come on now, don't even try me. Arani, welcome back. 
We cannot particularly judge CK3 in its vanilla version. CK2 current is the fruit of a lot of improvements since 2012. We will see what uh, the extensions and updates will give. I agree partially, but I also disagree partially. I do think that we can't just like avoid looking at eight years of progress. We can't make a step back there. That is exactly what happened with Imperator Rome, a game that I do like, but a game that also mostly, uh, you know, kind of worked out what your open of Salus Rome did wrong and like did it better, but you know, after 12 years. How old is uh, European Osalis from? I think it's like 15 years, maybe? After that long of a time, uh, you have to improve more than just on a 15-year-old game. You have to improve on your current game. So, I, I do think we need to look at CK2 today and CK3 tomorrow. Um, it's, it's just all I'm saying is, so many systems that we have seen have been improved in CK3. Uh, that we already know. And, and honestly, it's just, I gotta tell you. Listen, I, I see this joke and I like, I've seen it so often. You, you think I don't read my comments? Enzignanti is like in chat and he's like 399 for 3D avatar clothing for every single subculture. Here's the thing though, there's artists making that clothing. Enzignanti, do you want Paradox to not pay them? You have to pay for this. In some way. Those people want to eat. It's, I, I gotta tell you, it's, uh, I, I get it, you know, especially if you, I don't know, if you're a student, that sort of stuff. Uh, I, I completely get the frustration, but... Can't we appreciate the fact that those people need to get some uh, payment for their work? You don't have to buy visuals. They don't really uh, subtract anything. That's all. That's all I, I really want to say. I get it. It's it's super easy bait to go and be like, "Wow, nice uh, scamming." But at the end of the day, there's people out there that have to be paid. We have seen, let's just take a look at the game for one moment, because we have talked a lot about CK3. Um, and I want to, honestly, I love that conversation. I love talking about uh, games where we can only speculate. I, it's, it's fun, I'll be honest with you. We've seen a lot of blobbing here. Very, very successful. The first kingdom has been founded, and it was the Great Conqueror. Now, the thing about the people blobbing down here is essentially, and a player who is out rejoin after one hour as our vassal, you know what? Jirik. Yes, that is allowed. The, the Ragusa player will be able to rejoin as a vassal, that's fine. That is perfectly legal. We've seen a big move by Venice, and Venice was threatened, I'll be honest with you. Venice was in a very dire situation, because they could be taken out just by anyone taking one of their provinces. What are they doing right now? They're going for Arabia, so we have Venice going incredibly quickly towards India. Everybody else still consolidating, everybody else still forming a kingdom. Venice just goes, let's just dive into this without any questions. I don't think that we have seen any other kingdom form except for Songhai. A very good early formation here, of course, uh, Bornu actually not that far off in terms of realm, uh, you know, stretching. Not even realm size, just realm stretching. Akim over here just revoking some titles. Uh, War Machine, I assume, doing the same. Catholic Crusade for Gilan. Ah, you know what, let's just take a quick look at that, shall we? Gilan. So they are doing a, a Catholic Crusade for this country over here, the Shia Jibal. And they are definitely losing right here, as you can see. I'm gonna jump in as Mafasa. Uh, Maf Let's take a look at this crusade. Yeah, they're definitely gonna win this crusade. That's gonna bring so much money into the coffers of the Indian players, which may give them an edge, despite people dropping out that were in their team. 99 cents for calling me out. <laughs> That's a good one, dude. Um, any interest in the new updates for EO4 and Stellaris? Stellaris, yes, absolutely. I love Stellaris. I'm a huge space fan. I know that none of the people that are subscribed to the channel are space fans, but I'm a huge space fan. Uh, right now, I'm actually playing Avorion every evening with a, with a friend. It's, what a cool game. It's like EVE except without EVE. Uh, I, I, EVE Online, you know. What a, what a great game Avorion is. Uh, I'm gonna definitely play Stellaris Federations. I am probably not going to play EO4. <laughs> it's not, honestly, just... Not that, not that big a fan of EO4. Nothing against the game, I think it's just not for me. Are we gonna- can we all agree that CK3 mods are gonna be lit? I mean, there's just so- oh. Nope, I don't want to be this person anymore. Some kid just died, I don't even know what. Start the wailing. Let me check uh, Discord right here. What is, okay, chat. 
TK3. Let's just put all arguments about the game aside. It's, it's much speculation anyway, and even if it wasn't, let's just put that aside, right? What is the mod that you need to see in CK3? That where you open the, the Steam Workshop, you see the mod, and you're like, my life right now in this moment is pure bliss. What's the one mod? Where are you of the opinion if you have this, you can enjoy this game for a million years if necessary? Labon blobbing very nicely. Hey, he's a substitute, came in very late, but doing a good job at blobbing. And look at that, Wolfstone also doing a very good job. They are going for the African coast as well. So we have two, uh, two, uh, what's it called? Two teams now grabbing some land over here. Venice already, look at this. They are working together very well, making possible what was believed to be impossible. I see some after the end, some Game of Thrones. Some prawn. <laughs> you tell me about that mod, yeah? Baron tier characters. I, I see we have a fan of, uh, what's it called? From the Ashes? No, wait, that's an achievement. You know what I'm talking about, that one mod. Rise to power, that's the word. HIP. Build your own castle. Harold, I actually have to ask a question. Is build your own castle fun? Because I have never installed it, but I've seen that for years now it was straight the most subscribed mod ever. Isn't it just you literally investing in like a, a like a merchant tier palace thing? Mythological mod? Ooh, yeah, that sounds nice. Graphic mods, of course. I mean, graphic mods. We need graphic mods. Auto build. Complete modder access to the 3D avatars. I don't know if everyone is aware. Uh, first of all, yes, I agree 100%. I don't know if everybody is aware, but the thing about it is that uh, Imperator already allow allows so much like involvement in the 3D portraits. I do wonder though, so there's positives and there's negatives there. The negatives obviously are that you need to be sufficient in, for example, Blender or whatever the hell it is. Honestly, I don't even, Maya, I think it's Maya, right? So like in a program to even create these, but once you do, it's actually very, very good. So like what you can do with it is excellent. But you need to be proficient even more. And look at that. They did it. They took a piece of the cake. They are down in the Red Sea. And with that, Venice is declaring hunting season on India, I think. Whether the Indians are already ready is something different. But Venice is making a smart appearance. Although they were at risk of immediately losing the game. Luckily didn't for them. We'll have to see where that goes. Honestly, Orange is looking very solid. They have uh, some good conquests done. And if they can unify into one realm, Svira as well. Svira is already a king. King Klukis of Green Salona. That's a good name. Do we have any other king? Are you a king? No, you are just a merchant republic. Nothing against that, of course. I don't think we have any other king except these two. So we have uh, Songhai down here and then Green Salona. An Africa mod? That would be kind of... I, I would actually like to see a more detailed different regions of the world. Flashed out the castle building screen. You know what? I may check out that mod. I've never, never used it in my entire life, but I've always seen it on the top. Princess of Darkness. I, I, I think I have heard a bit. Isn't that the uh, vampire thing, right? Hukulin, <laughs> there is actually already... Um, some characters, I think, in India, because of their religion, will already have naked character models. But... <clears throat> More partition HRE land. Oh, yes, please. Any cheating mod? You know what? Yeah, I, I can see that. There, there's potential in that. Like, every time. Uh, who's lagging behind you? Who do I need to chide once more? It is, uh... Jirik. God damn it, Jirik. Geheimnisnacht. Oh... Alexander, Alexander, don't make me cry. Geheimnisnacht, you know, I've never even followed. I, I I need to point that out, I feel. I've never even followed Warhammer. I've never played with the figurines. I've never seen either 40k nor the normal ones. Never done anything in that universe. But I played Geheimnisnacht a couple of times and I said to myself, my god, this is a great mod. And I'm destroyed every time I think about it. That Geheimnisnacht, you know, there's, I think there's two valiant people working on it, but that is it, and that takes ages to update. <sighs> it hurts my soul. What a great mod. I, I definitely also, I agree, I need that in CK3. I, I definitely need that in CK3. We, we still have Jirik lagging behind here. Hmm. God damn it. 
There's a great CK2 mod that focuses on separating the Anglo-Saxon Heptarchy into tiny counties, and I may or may not... Oh, I know exactly what you mean. You mean one of the best new mods recently. And you know, like, we've had, we've had other new mods that came out, of course, but most of them were either, like, restricted in scale or they were very much just, you know, spin-offs of other mods. For example, uh, after the end Old World, I was contact uh, contacted as well, but sadly have no time to, like, play it pre-the pre, uh, pre release, so I'm gonna do that at some point, maybe in the coming weeks at some point. Um, and there you go, Jurik is actually out, damn. Wait a minute. Where the hell was he playing? Uh, did the computer die? The grey team? I don't know what happened there, but uh, Jurik may rejoin later on. I think uh, it was Athens. Man, there's a, a lot of hardship for Athens, you know that? Or rather for the entire great team. That that Britain mod is amazing. Absolutely insane. Genuinely. Performance improvements. <laughs> oh yeah. Zach, thank you for subscribing. I appreciate it. You know, sorry if I miss anyone. I don't actually get like a doo -doo, Dylan. Lays, I think I already said that. Thank you for subscribing. Uh, it just pops up and sometimes I see it, sometimes I don't see it. CK3+, plus, yeah. Oh yeah, I would like to see it. Community trade. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've heard a lot about that as well. Baron's Hundreds uh, Wards and something. Yeah, that's the name of the Britain mod. Uh, very excited for that one to like get more details as well. Terra, the person actually hosting the uh, community mega campaign in the Discord, has a mod that is... I, I believe it's, it's, it's Terra's mod, yeah. It is, a uh, <laughs> just the Holy Roman Empire. Ay ay ay. Now that's a mod. We're a bit slower today. Ah, look at that. War Machine. Interesting. War Machine actually took over that Crusader state and is now his own kingdom. Smart. Very smart, although cut off from, uh, you know, one another, these lands. But that can be helpful nonetheless. Is Venice making any moves? Yep, they are. Venice will be right next to India in just a couple of seconds. After the end, old world. Yeah, I'm definitely going to do something about it. It looks very good. It looks very quality. Um, I from what the developer told me as well. Uh, but sadly, just you know, no real time to do that at the moment. And it would be a bit of a waste if if I jumped into it earlier and then you know did like nonsense about it. We're going to get to that definitely. And I'm, I'm going to rebuild Bavaria. I don't even know honestly if I can do that. I'm pretty sure that the Prussians are back, and you gotta contain that menace whenever you can. So we're gonna we're gonna play in the Bavarian vicinity. Will the map be round like an Imperator Rome or flat like CK uh, CK2? I believe flat. I think flat is the answer to this question. I think they said something like this anyway, that the, the map would be uh, flat indeed. Venice about to lose Ragusa to peasants. Oh yeah. Damn. Ooh, would you look at that? Venice has big plans and, and they appear to be going quite well. Despite all the lagging, I think we are actually going to reach 10 years within one hour, which is exactly the speed that we want to have. There's a mod that completely removes the UK from the map. That mod was actually made by the same person that made uh, the Ireland Sicily swap. No, the Island Sardinia swap and the Crimea Sicily swap. I know this because he's part of the community. <laughs> oh, look at that. The Greys also now have a kingdom. We got some people that are fairly slow, you know that? Some people that still do not have a kingdom. King Arnold of Sri Lanka. He renamed the duchy to Sri Lanka. Kaiser Matthew, thank you. That is really good. What is the pink team doing? Oh, a lot of wars. A lot of wars going on there. I think they are speeding it up in the pink team here. They are trying to get the kingdom going as soon as possible. We have a one, two... You're still not a kingdom, are you? No. Three. So we have three kingdoms and then the fourth one, but that is an Indian player. And the Indian players, of course, are tasked with defending India, not with conquering it. And Hakim facing eternal rebellions. Huh. Increased council power. Honestly, Hakim should have just accepted the council power increase there. It makes, it makes no difference to the player. Realistically speaking. Alicia. Alright, yeah, holding on.
I'm gonna have to upgrade my PC just for CK3, yeah, you know, that's the price of uh, computer gaming, I suppose. It is not the cheapest of hobbies to get into, I'll be honest with you, just in general. EU4 is full of the uh, map swap thing. The thing is that the EU4 map is so much easier to mod, uh, ma to mod than CK2, so honestly, congratulations to everyone that is brave enough to just go on and constantly mod that stuff. That's a lot of modding to be done. Now, we see some good blobbing. Honestly, I still believe the orange team is making a good impression so far. I am thinking, do they have a chance of refer uh, reforming the burn collection? Because, uh, the religion collection? What? Because there's one holy site up here. Oh, that's a difficult one. I don't, I don't think we're going to see that reformation. But they're blobbing quite well. They should be able to form a kingdom fairly soon, and then they can unite and move on. In the first third, we have already seen some big moves. Venice, very impressive against Ragusa. Then Venice now pushing here for Muscat. So they're going to be up in India in just a bit. Let me actually... This actually is interesting. We have no merchant... Yeah, interesting. They didn't build anything at all. In terms of uh, merchant posts and trade posts, I mean. You know what I want to talk about? I want to talk about... Yeah, that's right. I didn't have an idea either. No idea. <laughs> uh, I follow your Bon, uh, bon Appetit video. Work like a charm. Th hey! Glad. Very glad that it worked. I actually had, my, had a bit of trouble myself. In the video, you know, usually the achievement videos, I don't do any cuts. I just speed things up so that you can see that this is one straight sitting. But in the video, near the end, there is actually a cut because I was like, is this bugged for me? I've been in hiding for like 10 years, nothing has happened. And right when I interrupted the recording, I wanted to start re-recording, right? I wanted to do it in a in a different run. Right when I stopped it, the game was like, yo, food's running out. And I was like, holy crap, we actually did it. It was a bit of a pain to record. Many other achievements are fairly easy in comparison, I would argue. You want to talk about Vicky 3? You know what? I can talk about Vicky 3 because I think Vicky 3 is currently in development and will be announced at this year's PDXCon. You heard it here first. I, I've mentioned it like several times months ago, but you heard it here first. Could do a multiplayer using Umbra Sphere, uh, Sphere Reborn. I think we are going to do that, but not team based. In that case, I, it'd just be a free fall. You know, just like play, role play a bit, that sort of stuff. Ah. You're making actually decent time. Yeah, I'm amazed that despite the very first and early lags, we we are going to get 10 years. Ooh, shit. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Look at that, the first kingdom. Yiland, Aiden created a kingdom. Yiland is in control. And with that, the pink team can actually come together and be ruled by the Danish queen, Queen Ranghild of Yiland. Just got the mission, uh, the mission to duel the Marshal of Sri Lanka. Ah, right, to duel this guy. <laughs> Aiden, I declare the creation of the great kingdom of Yiland. Just named Yiland. If it works, it works. We are going to rehost in about seven minutes. Don't worry, don't worry. We are gonna we are gonna Rios in seven to ten minutes. Yep, they might be Skylines too. Ooh, ooh, yeah, well, that'd be interesting. That City Skylines is a great game, absolutely wonderful. A lot of lag now, though. God damn it, Hakim! <laughs> I love calling Hakim out. Look at that. Yeah, they, they are doing... Ooh. Wolfstone has made their way down. Wolfstone, it's so, so sad. How can you die when you're 30... Wait, what? Oh, no. When you're 20... Oh, no. It was his mistake. I think he got wounded in a battle. You never lead armies with a, with a character in, in these multiplayer games, I'll be honest with you. Ooh, what the? Are you seeing this? 
Yo! That's a huge expansion here by Terra, and that should mean... In just a minute, he's gonna form a kingdom. Orange United? Did they now? Oh yeah, they did. Team Orange. Look at that. Look at that. That's if PDXCon isn't cancelled. It's just gonna be a stream. Like, they're just gonna be like, hey, PDXCon, everything live stream today because, well, we're here. Now, I think, if anything, PDXCon would be at, you know, like, Q3 or Q4, so we're talking fairly late into the year. And at that point, it, it will be over. But I, I'm actually convinced, and sue me, if it's not right, no, actually, don't sue me. You have no grounds, and I will not go... Uh, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna destroy you in court. You hear me? But here's the thing: I do think Wiz is working on Victoria Three. I have no actual information. I just, it's just a hunch, you know. If anyone was brazen enough to say I'm, I want to do Victoria Three, despite everything, it has to be him, right? Ooh, and look at that! They, yep, Tara just formed the kingdom, and with that, we now have a unified blue. We have a unified, yep, they are also unified. Unified blue, unified green, unified pink. Gray uh, also could be unified, but isn't. They aren't actually under one supervision there. We are seeing a very solid play by most factions. Even they down here, only three players, but they're doing fine. They're gonna, you know, blob out here. I don't know if they're gonna reform anything. I don't know what's gonna happen there, but they are doing quite well. And Venice has actually taken the province. Look at that. Grand Mayor Longcock Veni of... Oh. You know what? The, the funniest thing about this is that this isn't even... <laughs> this isn't even a meme name. Are you kidding me? The game memed me. This isn't even a player doing it. <laughs> you know, I thought, smart. You got me. But it was the game that got me. How are the English team planning on getting all the way to India? They have coastal conqu uh, conquest by the virtue of having a Germanic player, meaning uh, they could even just, honestly, just coastal conquest down here. Let me check. Yeah. Look, look, look there you go. They're doing it just as we are speaking. They're going to go via the Black Sea and then probably have the reach, you know, the distance here. It's short on this day, they're probably just gonna hump, uh, jump down there. They could have conquered anything here in Persia already, but I guess this is a good uh, foothold. Yeah, nah, they are getting down there, believe you me. How long would it take to play each individual character within CK2? Eternity? <laughs> And yeah, this is actually a good call. We are going to rehost right now. Game has been saved. I'm gonna to go to be right back. Rehost. Let me just quickly uh, do the rehost. Honestly, so far, surprisingly, so there's only four players per team. And surprisingly, at least to me, we're looking at a situation where every single team, except Grey, I think Grey is like in the hardest situation, but not because of their own wrongdoing, primarily just because they were immediately ambushed by Venice, which is fair, that's, you know, just how it goes. But you gotta, you gotta give them credit, every single team here, yeah, how they kept it together, how well they blobbed, and how well they're all heading towards India. Despite the fact that there are only four people, I, I really thought like two or three teams would be knocked out fairly early on, but everybody has a, cho has a shot here. I'd, I'd imagine at least a century or two to play every single character. Yeah, that sounds about right. As there we go. We're gonna good. Okay, let me just rehost this as you do. Yeah, we're making good speed. One hour, ten years. That's about what I want to get. You know, roughly thirty years in. That's usually where we land. <laughs> Felix Carter's finally not getting completely wrecked in the game. <laughs> He's doing it. Alright, let me just type this out and give them the password and everything else at everyone.
Okay. There we go. Has been done. Now my question is... This... Okay, one moment, I gotta... Is my Discord dying? What's happening here? No. Okay, give me one moment. To explore whether one of the players needs to leave. As everybody else loads in. <clears throat> hmm. Is... I want to be an engineer in here. I don't think... No, no I want to be an engineer is in here. Um, I'm going to do the following. Give you the yellow roll. Uh... All right, perfect. Sorry, just doing some organization in the background. So, 30 players already joined here. A couple more still to come. And is joined Crusader India. Hmm. Oh, actually. Actually, um, One proud Iranian, I am going to put you into the green team instead. Alright, alright, alright. Going quite well. We have a... Yeah, beautiful. All right. Taking name suggestions from the chat for the Blue Kingdom. I have one, but I'm <laughs> not going to mention it. <laughs> um, all right, some some people still loading in. That's how it goes. No, no, no. We're just re-hosting uh, Agam Chada. Pakistan, do you want everyone to die from embarrassment? My god. Not like this. I forgot that my board is actually having a problem. Bloomers. Mega Cheese Lord. That's a really good name. The Bloomers. 
Holy shit. Okay, let me check here. We have a vassal there, that's fine. Jurik is back, right. Um, Holken is now up here. Where is... We're still missing a couple of people, which is fine. For the record here. One proud Californian just joined the Discord and has a very good avatar. I, I highly recommend having an avatar at the very least as quality as his. Bloopers. <laughs> Alright. I think we're still waiting for about one player. It may be more. I'm seeing... Isn't one Indian player missing? Uh, I believe there's one missing actually, yeah. Beyond that though... We're all loaded in and selected. Uh, we need... Which one would he be playing? I actually need to check that. Oh, that's just too much. Too many maps that I need to uh, look at. Green, right. One, two, three, four. Wait, what? Ah, it's the same kingdom, right. They already swore fealty. I get it. Yeah, we, we, we do need one more join there. Let's ask the green team whether that join will occur soon. Is Songhai being great conqueror? Okay, it is allowed because there are only three players. Um, one player sadly had to uh, drop out. Had to drop out, and uh, that's why we're here. Talos also joined. Yeah, I think we're just after Talos. I believe we're waiting for one more player, and then we can actually unpause. I'm surprised. People are getting over to India so much more efficiently than they did in the last uh, run of this, which was just a week ago actually, where we ran the same system, like the same idea, except with a different Shattered World. Give me one, I'm gonna get some water. I have returned with some water. How are we doing here? Everybody join yet? 
Um, it's still. I think we might just have to start. Now that I think about it, it's fairly okay. I think we're just going to start. Alright, I'm, I'm just gonna start. Um, there's one person missing. But... At the latest, there, that is a rejoin that can occur in the last time we rehost. Make a reverse game too. The players start in India and have to reach Iceland. I this was actually supposed to be the reverse game. The problem is in the random religion generation. The way it works is that it always assigns more religion, uh, more religions in Europe. Meaning that what you end up with is that essentially all the wonderful, reformable, and whatnot, and you know, like pagan religions, they all start over here in Europe. And if we started the game. Who's, who's not ready yet? Ah, Charlemagne. If we started the game over in... Uh, Charlemagne, he, he, he gets it. If we started the game over in India, everybody would just be one religion. And that makes it considerably uh, more boring, I think. I think one player may even have crashed. Not loading in. Come on. I think that's a crash. Sorry, sorry about that, but otherwise it would have never started. Unlucky, that is super unlucky for, for the team there. But I think the game just crashed there. Alright, and with that, we are back in speed 3. Alemani is still represented here for some reason. There we go. Yes. Wait, what? Oh my god, I think him crashing bugged the game out. Rehost. Alright, we're just gonna rehost you. My god. Well? How's everybody doing tonight? We have entered the middle of the stream, which means we are currently in Rehost City. As always. I don't know if you guys have checked it out, and it is not wise as a streamer to recommend you to go watch a different stream, but currently, and I think it is still on, it may have ah, oh, it may have actually just ended. I think it ended like an hour ago? Like 10 minutes ago? There is a game of uh, content creator Solaris Federations patch going on, on the official Paradox channel. You should check it out if you haven't seen it. It it was very cool. I watched some uh, more days. They okay. Let's host. Let's do the old classic back and forth again. Right, it has been hosted. And with that, I just need to post the ID. There we go.
what are the uh, what are the requirements to join the game essentially there is a discord channel that is called opbmp and if you go to in the discord if you go to rules or whatever the, the channel is named you will see a post where you can react to that post and you will get a role if you give yourself the opbmp role you will be pinged whenever signups for these sort of games start now there is also a different game that is being hosted by the community it is the mega campaign game a game that one you can join by get it, giving yourself the ck2 role in the same channel that i just talked about and then you can join that and phase in and phase out no matter how you want that is organized by tara great member of the community and that's how you join Sometimes we have too many people signing up. If that is the case, um, I pull the names via a random number generator. But well, cool, and essentially every uh, every time I, I announce a game, you will get pinged if you have the role, and then you can sign up for it. The instructions for every particular session are in uh, the channels where I will post it then when the time is right what's the name of the blue kingdom I can only assume I can only hope that it is indeed bloomer which one is the blue one blue wrath come on now Tara that's weak <laughs> I think we're still missing a couple of people let me see even if not I'm gonna start very soon Okay. Irene, don't worry about it. We, you know, it happens. It happens to the best. We're just going to continue as we are because we need to get the time down. Even not everybody has made it yet. Hakim isn't even here. Hakim, what are you doing? No, he is here. Wait, Tabara's son? Wait, what? Yeah, that doesn't uh, that doesn't sound right. Thank you, Hakim. And let's go. And let's change the screen back. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> I had already forgotten it. Yeah, and Chalamani, the, the one that I had to drop out or that I had to kick because it was infinite loading, not yet back. So I think just like the game just broke on, on his end. Okay, there we go. Game is actually running. We did it. Ray for the win. I gotta tell you, if you think Ray is going to win, you are much more optimistic than I am. Ray is in a more than difficult position right now. Are you Gray? Yeah, so we have Athens here. We have uh, Croatia. Then we have up here Bohemia and the one county, do uh, one county count. Vulcan of Moravia. I think Venice has magnificent chances of doing this. I also think Orange still in a very strong position, especially after unifying now, they can push forth. Honestly, I also think right here, Team Yilland has a good shot at winning. How's this war going against Cherson? Quite well, yeah. They're gonna they're definitely gonna win that. Nyla of the Pink Emirate. <laughs> Good name. New Day is sorry, I I waited for quite some time and then I thought to myself, let's just jump in after all the delays and I swear to god dang dangle and Hakim. Not like this. I thought the game may have just like been completely screwed for you. We waited for quite some time. Have you guys seen, you know, how many people yet? I, I assume not that many, but is anyone, you know, what is thinking about Knights of Honor 2 here? Because I'm incredibly excited for that one. My god, the map is just so beautiful. The Knights of Honor 2 map is... And don't tell Paradox, but I think it looks better than the Crusader Kings 3 map. And obviously, you know, the Crusader Kings 3 map is way larger when it comes to the, the province density and whatnot, but... 
It just doesn't look that pretty. Hmm. Dangle my god. How's Dangle doing? He has caught up. I think it might actually ah, dangle, please. No, not like this. Hmm. I do hope that this will uh, improve in CK3. My god, dangle. to look good. I don't know. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it is bad. Interesting. Now, purple is, of course, yet again, fully here. Hmm. Strong defenders, and they will now be facing Venice. Attacking Socotra. That's a good grab right there. Consolidation of Treviso. They are defending against the Milanese player, and that is indeed a player. So they're going to take Treviso off of Venice's hand, and I could see Venice, oh look at that, yeah, the Blue Wrath is sieging down Venice. I cannot believe, genuinely do not believe that Venice uh, is getting, they're getting pummeled at home. I mean, they already did the jump over to uh, India, but I, look at this, the Blue Wrath is raiding them, and then we have this war here by the Milanese, so Treviso is being taken out. Venice is in a tough spot. That was Dangle, by the way, whose computer I can only assume is currently exploding. Look at that. That's a rough time right here. A very rough time indeed. Can I play... Where's the last merchant family? Am I blind? I think it's Vassals, right? It's this kid. This, oh, this kid is a player, actually. Hmm. I'm gonna play Treviso here for a moment. Hello, I'm Treviso and I'm being sieged down. Hey, look at this. Venice itself completely raided. The entire county will be gone. Give the bronze horses Venice. Pisa is taking... Oh, look at that. There they go. Wait, what? All right, they are under Terra, and he still... It's still named the Blue Wrath. Dangle, I gotta tell you. Not like this. Everyone flee Venice? Wait, <laughs> what? Escoldi, I believe he's a vassal of Venice, right? Aiden, I am sorry. <laughs> There's some good names in here. What happened to Escoldi's father here? In a dramatic duel for blood, killed by school, by a random man. Not like this. Knock knock sn uh, snitches, it's your nightmare. <laughs> Alright, we got a, a huge... Player war going on against Venice. Uh, the, the Blues are destroying Venice and honestly it looks really dire. I don't think Venice can pull that one out successfully. In the meantime, Pink is still going around. Oh, wait a minute. The, the Hebrides? Oh, right. They're just consolidating over here in the United Kingdom, in Great Britain, I should say. They have won their war and are now in control of Southern Crimea. And I'm gonna move out of this character. But they have won this war, meaning they are looking towards being able to actually go down there. But interestingly enough, War Machine has created a very early situation, a very early chance for the purple team to catch anyone off guard that, you know, lands here. They could immediately declare war on them with this wonderful position. How much money does purple team actually have? 4,500. Yeah, they are all, except Hakim, they're all fairly rich. Why is Talos... What, ha what happened here? Why is Talos so tiny? Oh, he was a Republic and he died. No, he didn't die. Wait, I don't actually get that. What exactly did Talos do here? Oh, he... Right, he just disconnected. Oh, that's so unlucky. 
I, I bet the AI screwed it up in some way. Hmm. Ragusa? What happened with Ragusa here? Yeah. Wait, wait, what is happening? Wait, what? Wait a minute. I think the game just freaked. In a, in a good way, I think? Wait a minute. So, Dangle is in Team Red. And now... For s in so, Venice moved their capital over to Socotra after conquering Socotra. And when that happened, Dangle became... Independent? I'm actually losing my mind. What exactly happened there? Dangle, who is part of the Venice team, is now all alone in Ragusa. And he is a vassal of Croatia. I, I think the game must have freaked that. <laughs> what? So he is no longer a merchant republic either. What is any of this? He's now under under Team Grey. <laughs> what? Oh, wait, wait, what? Padragusa? So, no. So, a part of red is the vassal of Nehemia Solis, so of Croatia. Four of the other players are still part of the Republic, but the Republic of Socotra. And Dangle is now trapped. <laughs> Dangle is no longer a merchant republic. He is trapped. Oh, wow. So... When Venice moved over to Socotra, Dangle was left behind. And that means one player of the red team is uh, effectively out of the out of the game. I mean, think about it. That throws them out. Look at that. He is now blobbing into Hauseland. I think they're going to unify their borders in just a second. And then we have a very strong burn empire down here. Orange, in the meantime, still unified, of course. What are they going for? El Reef? Why are you... I guess they want more sea connections here. What they really need to do at this point is going over here and going to India. The Bloomer Brigade... ...is here. What do you mean, the Bloomer Brigade? The Bloomers are fighting! Oh, they're actually coming from Venezia itself. It doesn't matter anymore, because Venezia is no longer the actual capital of Socotra. The Grand Mayor now lives down here, but Venezia will fall. The blue team is cleaning house and kicking out Venice for good. Oh yeah. Terra. Hey, it's me again. Just wanted to kill you guys. I don't think this will be game over for Red, because Red is looking at a situation where they can live in Socotra, but very, very weak. How many, uh, how many times did he say what? Honestly, this is just such a strange turn of events. Every time the game spurks out like that and just, you know, releases one of the merchant houses, it is uh, very odd. It's similar to when we had our Dutch playthrough, and in the Dutch playthrough, we stopped being a member of the Dutch thing, meaning we had no connection to the Dutch Merchant Republic whatsoever. The game mechanics just aren't that well crafted around Merchant Republics. <laughs> how did any of this happen? All right, um, what else do we have here? So this war was successful then. For Treviso. Yeah, this is a big kingdom. Blue looks spooky. Look at this. The Bloomers are unified and they are quite strong. Um, we do, of course, still have Green Salona. Pretty unified here. Ration independence. Terra killed the sun. What happened here? Hmm. Damn. He did. He did kill his son. There is still an heir, so that is fine, but I will repay. Okay, they demand reparations. They got it figured out. They uh, there, there was a rule breaking right there, but they got it figured out. Ah, and here we go. Holy Phoenix of India. Interesting. They they went for a strategy where they don't... So they do defend Lanka, but instead of conquering Lanka, they just hold every single piece of uh, coast that is in India so that nobody can even come close to Lanka. Whether that will actually work is, of course, something else. 
I root for the bloomers upon principle. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. I hate that you can't change your actual color on the map. Because this is not a bloomer color. You know, I think I think we all can realize this being the, the case. And indeed, the, the blues and the red team have come to an agreement when it comes to paying back for the death of the sun. I just rejoined and the bloomers are unified. The bloomers beat up Venice. I mean, technically, they're still beating it up. Look at this. And there it goes. Venezia has fallen, but not the Venetian team because they now live down here in Socotra. And they appear to have a pretty decent time. Do they have any trade posts, like, at all? Yeah, Socotra actually has a couple of them. We got a... I think this is a... Is this... AI? No, this is the purple team, isn't it? A purple rain, yeah. <laughs> and there you go, the player Talos is now exactly that. Yeah, they're, they're playing it smart. So essentially, to explain the strategy of purple, what is purple's goal in this playthrough? Purple's goal is essentially to hold the island of Lanka. Only this island matters, right? What is important is that no other player team out of the, you know, uh, vision of the Holy Phoenix India team, no other player team may hold any province in Lanka. As soon as any other player team holds a province here, they lose. So what they are doing is, they have a limit to their realm size. They're keeping the realm small, only taking out whatever they need at the coast. And Ascoldia... Wait, Ascoldia just disconnected. Let me check. Did his family actually die? Like, fully die? Are you new? You don't have a special name. Died under suspicious circumstances. Teammate. I am so confused. Did the red team just kill itself? See, now I have even more questions. Let me check in with Ascoldi in Discord here. Yeah, we're coming to a very confusing part. <laughs> The Kingdom of Sri Lanka uh, over here. Look at that, Sri Lanka Karnet. Does of course not count, but it is a good meme. Let me see if, if we can get some uh, information from Ascoldi here. What exactly actually happened there? But the game just didn't move me to Socotra. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Your move to Socotra appears to be slightly bugged. In one way. Or another. Let me actually uh, get rid of this. Honestly, just see it on my screen. You can't see it. I just got rid of something. Don't worry about it. John, welcome to the stream. Jacob, so essentially the goal is we have uh, seven teams that started over here in Europe. And all those teams are made up out of four people except down here. But they're also, honestly, they're big, but they still have m ways to go before they can ever go towards India. But that aside... Those seven teams start somewhere over here. They were able to choose that for themselves. And they have to take the island of Lanka. Whoever takes more land in Lanka or comes closest to Lanka, in case nobody takes more land, or any land for that matter, wins the game. There's one more team. We haven't talked about that so far. This is the purple team, and they are tasked with protecting Lanka. If any other team holds any province in Lanka, they lose. So purple cannot win if any of the other teams uh, win by holding anything in Lanka. Right now, we have... Uh, Pretty wild move here by Team Red. They are green on the map, of course, but they are Team Red. They moved all the way from Ven uh, Venice, moved their mercenary, uh, their merchant republic over here to Socotra, and are now in reach of India. Oh no, no way! Wait a minute. Where's this rebellion? Is the rebellion already over? Where are you? Are you kidding me? Seriously? Where was this Sunni uprising? Why does it say Sunni uprising of Socotra? <laughs> Who are you? Are you this? No, this is a Yazidi uprising. The Sunni uprising came, I believe, from here and is now marching all the way up there. I don't know why, but that's not going to be a threat. Other than that, we had some big moves by uh, Team Grey. They unified. They just destroyed uh, one player of the Reds, but one of their players also got destroyed very early on. The Bloomers are big and ready to go further into the east. Then we have Team Green, of course. 
Green Salona, Fairly United as well, as well as Orange, all of which are now ready to make the jump. But whether they can actually make the jump is something slightly different. And then Ranghild over here is now fighting for Basra, meaning Team Pink, from all the way over here, will also make it to India. We are looking at a Royal Rumble in India in the last one and a half hours. That is right, we are now at halftime. And we're looking at a Royal Rumble in just a bit. I had a, so, okay, here's Askeldia's explanation of what happened. I had a barony in Venice. We surrendered Venice. Our capital was in Socotra. I thought my mansion would move to Socotra, but due to being landed, I died when Ve when Venice was conquered. Can I rejoin as a... Yes. We can rejoin. That is very unlucky. So his merchant, his, his family of the Merchant Republic didn't get moved to Socotra because he had a holding down here once this holding was completely taken because, you know, this was conquered, of course, by a Team Bloomers. He lost everything and his game was over. So, essentially, he faced certain doom. But he can rejoin as one of the underlings, one of the poorer merchant republics in the house of Socotra. They're still fighting the Sooner Revolt. I wonder what their next move is. Purple appears to be... Actually, not at all. Look at that. They are conquering. Are they going for any Lanka provinces? I don't know the names, sadly. No, neither of these are what they are fighting for. Yeah, they're just, like, blobbing out for more coast, I suppose. That makes a lot of sense. I'm, I'm not criticizing that, really. In the meantime, Pink is leading troops in the Dnieper. If that is your real name. Interesting. Let me let me be one of your vassals, please. No, not this one. Where are your Legion's troops? Look at that. We can watch Pink make their way to Basra, where they then will hopefully uh, be able to grab some land and then be able to, you know, just jump over to India. I've had consumption the entire game. <laughs> when will he have a Rios? We will have a Rios in only 24 minutes. Indeed. God damn it, Napoleon chick. Me and Ragusa were caught behind during the evacuation, yeah. You got absolutely dunked on, I see. Disband your own sh uh, ships, that they cost you money, right. They're giving tips to one another on how to best get to Basra. Now, I can't see Yilin's troops. Didn't? Wouldn't Yilin just have put down some troops here? Oh, the, the, the fleet is still entirely over there. It's gonna be a lot of clicking. God damn it, Napoleon chick. I'm gonna go down to speed 2 then. I think he just, like, doesn't work at all anymore. Yeah, Napoleon Chick's just stuck on the date. Hmm. All right, now it is running again. Very nice. And I think Gulland is landing, but Pink Emirate is also here. So we, we see a split effort, essentially. Yeah, Galicia, they're all coming over here. Although I'm not sure that this is... Why are you parking your troops on Tripoli? That costs you so much manpower. Look at this. They're losing 1.5% every tick. They need at the very least about 6 to 7 ticks to get down here. And even then, they don't actually get any, or they still get attrition until they get rid of this and can actually loot the county. Whenever you are actively looting a county, just for the record, if, you know, I know a couple of people don't know this, whenever you're actively looting a, t a county, you're not actually taking any attrition. Uh, unless you are over the attrition level. God damn it, Jirik. Yeah, we did it. Thank you. Look at them walk. A lot of laggers today, I gotta tell you. Considerably worse than in any other game that we had, I think. And it's not even Hakim this time around. Who do I blame? If not Hakim. Team Pink making it all the way down there.
There we go. Look at that. I hope that they have enough troops. They do, it appears. Are they? Oh, God. He's actually walking all the way over to Team Pink. King Dawood of Basra will end up in Yiland. I can already tell you. The AI always goes for your capital. <laughs> there you go, yeah. Wait, why are you down to 1.3k? Oh, no. Where are the troops of the Pink Emirate? No, there they are. Why didn't... Weird. Didn't show them in... Oh, is Galicia not actually part of the kingdom? No, they are. Why, why didn't I see them then? Strange. Honestly, let's just try to stay on speed too. There's a... You all need to get better computers, yeah? And look at that. The siege has begun. Let's play as this fella. What's he doing? Yep, he's just parking his troops here. Yeah, this AI. You know? It's difficult to <laughs> get a good AI, but my god, they are not exactly smart. Now, let's refresh the player map mode. We have Socotra. What are they doing, if anything? They're still fighting this Uni revolt. They should have just pieced it out, honestly. There's no point in keeping that, al uh, keeping that war alive. The Bloomers, strangely enough... Oh no, there they go. They're going for Jeddah. So they are going the Red Sea instead of the Persian Gulf. But we're going to have red, blue, pink. And I mean, yeah, they technically also. We, we're going to have uh, red, blue, pink, yellow. All the way in India. Already. Very, very fast. Very effective, I, I may add. What are you going for here? Invasion of Cairo. Seems a bit wasted, but... You know, they could have used that over the Red Sea to begin with. Now, how is... Who do I wanted to look at here? What are you doing? Green not going anywhere at this point. Strange. How's orange doing? Orange not at war. And they don't hold any piece of land that could lead them towards India. But then again, they still have uh, quite some time. When does Quantum Leap come out? Uh, every day, 8pm, so... In 20 minutes. Happy to hear that you like the series. Try to, uh, in the future, kind of up the quality. But you know, I, you know, you, you get better as you practice things. And of course, doing the editing every day and whatnot makes it so that I will get better at it. I hope that the quality can only go up from here. The crash caused my monitor. This, don't worry, don't worry. You know, I'm, I'm sorry, by the way, for like starting uh, a session too early. I just thought that like it could have died, and, you know, completely and I was like let's just let's go and uh, here we are I hope that it is still salvageable once you rejoin staying in port and are eating your money rehost in 20 men yep th there is still some time until the next rehost still fighting this rebellion unbelievable uh, how's this going yeah this is definitely going to be a victory for the Yolanders meaning that they will be down here and so far, I'm looking at this, right? The closest person to Lanka, to the island of Lanka, the closest team, I should say, is definitely Team Red. This, this right here seals it. So my god. The next rehost will be in uh, a meager 20 minutes. I'm pretty sure yellow is going African and that's what the invasions are for since orange will lock down the burn reformation. Can orange actually do this? They will never get this right here and I don't think Talos is going- Ah, no, not again. What happened? Um, I don't- I might be wrong here, but they have no chance of getting this because that's Bloomer's territory. They have no chance of getting Songhai's. Uh, that's impossible. The kingdom of nothing. They would have to go up there, I suppose. And I don't think they are. I don't I don't think they're gonna reform anything. The individual rulers will just stay their religion, I suppose. While the leader will be Germanic. I, I don't think they're gonna reform it. I do agree though that I think as well that 
There is going to be an African Reformation if everything works out for them. We had some people drop, that's fine. Because we are going to rehost fairly soon. Quality is already at highest level? Nah. Never, you know, I'm gonna quote Ninja. I don't know if <laughs> Ninja did that infamous tweet. I was like, if you don't get angry, if you don't throw a fit after losing, then you're not a gamer. And you already gave up. That's two losses in a row. You know, just like, it's obviously like a meme tweet. It's a very silly logic. If you heard of it, you will know what I mean. But uh, I do think, you know, I like looking back and being like, I can do this in a better way. Because that means I can improve. And improving is really nice. It's, it's excellent. Doesn't just feel good, but also can lead to good examples. Now they are going. Yeah, we are seeing the invasion of Makure here, so I do think that we are going to see the reformation of Africa. Song High, only three players. Uh, the Great Conqueror, nonetheless, very, very strong. Of course. Sword of Lemiki Maunu. Moral damage, moral defense. That's amazing. That's pretty good. Oh, what, what happened here? Wait, what? Ragusa <laughs> imprisoned the Queen of Croatia? How did that happen? How did he actually get her into, into his prison? Oh, wow. So players are allowed to keep other, uh, other player characters prisoner for two years. So either Croatia sits this out or releases him and then gets released from prison. Wow. Well, Prada Rainy, you can try rejoining indeed once the next rehost occurs. We are the new Venice now. <laughs> what? Alright, the entire coastline here is full. Look at that. Purple team is playing it very smart. Nobody can take land close to them without fighting them. Now, the thing about this is, if I'm not mistaken here, yeah, look at that. I just go around. All these conquest wars that are available to Venice. Because they are secret German, or they are open Germanics, I should say. And they are going for Zonda. Interesting. Holy Phoenix, India. Just reminding the purple team that they can only have a realm size of 120. And they are very close to it, 119 here. I don't know, but let me out. How did this end up? Did they ever release? Nope. <laughs> Oh, what am I seeing here? The blue Vona virus, huh? Oh, they actually formed an empire. My god. Wow. It's very rare to, you know, in these sessions to see actual empires form. Give me freedom. <laughs> Ragusa still asking for freedom. You know... The thing that I am personally most looking forward to for CK3 is very simple. It's hot join and it is, uh, you know, more quality of life in general in multiplayer. These games and everything are nice, but my god, I can't wait until hot join. You know, right now, if you drop out, you have to wait for an hour until I rehost. I, I get it, it sucks, right? In, in comparison to the more modern games. I'm very much looking forward to that. And look at this beautiful map. Look at what the players already created. Holy Phoenix India. Songhai didn't even bother giving it a name. Oh, look at that. Barry. I think that's a great conqueror, right? Yeah, look at that. Sarald the Wolf of Barry. 
Then, of course, uh, Blue Rona. Then we have Green Salona. More like Celery. <laughs> Hard him again. Damn, look at Thrace. Very, very strong. It is AI, of course. The player will return, but very strong AI even. Even at that point, we're looking at a, at a very solid unit there. I think what they are doing is... How are they doing this? They just shrunk in, in realm size. I think they're releasing people in Persia whenever they conquer more land to stay under 120 realm size. But this does still... This still looks the same, honestly. What is... What exactly are they releasing here to bring down the realm size? Are they... They can't pillage their own holdings, so... I wonder how they're doing it. Exosteel, you have to apply to get in, actually. Yeah, it's... We, we usually get more people that want to play than we have slots. If you go into the Discord and give yourself the role OPB MP, which you can do by just reacting to a role, it's explained in the server, um, you can, you know, get on the list to get in. That's really how it works. Oh... Okay, Talos just explained, and this is what we saw earlier, if you were here at the time. He just explained what happened over here. He essentially made himself into a merchant republic from being feudal by making their heir into a, a merchant republic. At least that is what I believe it is. And they are staying under the limit here. That is working out quite well. Look at Songhai. I mean, this is honestly... I like this empire the most just because it looks so aesthetic. I also like... <laughs> nothing. Hey, what you doing? Nothing. <laughs> oh, look at that Swami, how cute. That's a... Oh, that's not even a great conqueror. Yo, how did they do it? That's really cool. What happened up here? Zunists, great conqueror Vikan. Oh my god, that is impressive. Yulin still fighting the war for Basra. That is a very long war, all things considered. But they are winning it, and they are going to win it, because they have already sieged down... Much of the holdings. Unlucky that both of these are, of course, castles. That makes it significantly longer. Neki Lloyd, welcome to the stream. Um, essentially, we have teams that were based in Europe in a shattered world. And as you can see, in about two hours, they managed to take much of Europe. Honestly, very, very quick, of course, how it goes. And their goal is to go all the way from Europe to Lanka. Whoever holds the most provinces, or if nobody holds provinces in Lanka, then whoever is the closest to Lanka wins. Now, we also have one team over here, that's these guys, that are defending India and Lanka, and if no other team holds anything in Lanka, they win. So, we're gonna see how this actually turns out. Right now, I wanna... Okay, let me make a strange prediction, right? I think... Nobody is getting a piece of Lanka. I think the players from Europe and Africa are gonna start infighting here, and purple will be able to defend Lanka. Meaning that probably the one that wins the game from the European side, because they are closest to Lanka, will be Venice. Because Venice doesn't just have Muscat, they also will have Zonda, which is right over here. Although that, of course, could be taken away by purple. We'll have to see how that goes. Uh, I'm very interested, but I think red may have it. And I'm calling it way too early, I just want to point that out. I'm calling it way too early, but I just don't think that Purple will let anyone take, uh, take Lanka. That is... I honestly think it's it's fairly impossible. How long will the stream last? For about uh, one more hour, maybe like ten minutes, something like that, yeah. That sounds about right. I don't know what Blue is currently doing. They have jumped over here now. Wait, why are you white all of a sudden? Did you create an empire? Yeah, we have an empire. It's Senpo, Jambai, Tagnang. They actually did it. Other than that, we have so many different teams. Yeah, look at that. So they have now entered the Red Sea. We have the African team, Songhai. We have them in control of much of Abyssinia and Ethiopia. Uh, no, Sudan and Abyssinia. Sudan and Egypt, that's actually... Abyssinia is down here, this is not even Abyssinia. Um, they have this under control, so we have multiple teams now, as well as, of course, Pink that are taking Basra, that are in 
you know, closing in distance when it comes to India, but whether they actually will close in is a bit of a different topic, seeing as both Venice holds a pretty good position here, which probably, honestly, I think Venice is in one of the weakest positions, all things considered. They are only, they are four people, of course, but they are only vassals of one another, meaning that this is literally all they hold. People could easily beat them up. Honestly, people, quite frankly, could probably also beat up New Venice down here, and if New Venice falls, if Socotra falls, then that may spell doom for the entire Merchant Republic. But they are holding the best positions, I think that much should be clear. Towards India. Oh, Naki Lord, dude, don't be sorry. I, I just hope that you're having a great time, I hope that you are having a great weekend, all things considered, that's the most important part. The only team... I think green is in a, in a good position. Despite everything, look at that. They are positioned everywhere. We're gonna have a green player come back. Thrace, that's, it's a, it's a very strong position. The only team that I'm medium worried about, and I say medium, very specifically, is orange. Oh, maybe I shouldn't be orange now. All of a sudden, grabbing land in Arabia. The last third of this entire campaign will be intense because every single team will be active in the Indian Ocean. Oh, I'm excited for that. I can't believe that every team made it there as well. Wait a minute, how's Grey doing? Actually, maybe I'm wrong. Ah, uh, Grey is going for Ragusa. Ah, they're gonna beat up Dangle here. And they are gonna win it, I reckon. But Grey is the furthest team when it comes to actually making the jump to India. Whether that will work out for them, whether it won't work out for them is... without a doubt... uncertain. It has not actually been 20 minutes, I can tell you that, because uh, I uh, took a look at the map, eh? Captain Nemo, after two years, and I think you were freed in time, good. Yeah, it's two years that a player, so they asked me, it was a, uh, the Queen of Croatia asked me, hey, when do I have to be released from prison? There you go, that's the answer. Two years. Rehost time will soon occur, you know what, actually, let's just do a rehost right now. Save the game. Switch this over. There you go. There we go. That's a rehost. There we go. Did the did anybody see did the Stellaris uh, content creator clash? Is that already over for today? I think they're they're gonna have another session tomorrow, right? Uh, I miss it in in most parts then. Can a new player still join? Not today's multiplayer game, but many other multiplayer games in the future. There is also a grand campaign running <coughs> that will probably have multiple games in this week, because, literally because of Corona, I'm not even shitting you. Um, what? No, I did not mean. So, if you were to join the Discord, you can definitely get in on the action in the future, consistently. Everybody's invited, of course, to the Discord, but these competitive games just need some, some boundaries, really. I'd like to send this, yes. Thank you. There you go. 
Somebody reacted with worst girl. <laughs> All right, everybody rejoin and then we shall start. Look at this beautiful map. Is it is it on the screen yet? Yeah, it is. It is. Okay. Look at this beautiful map. My god. Wash your hands, kids. That's actually right, yeah. India is allowed to take Lanka. They just haven't because they wanted the coast to keep all of you out. I think a smart strategy. Oh, and look at that. Now they've taken some of the coast. And some of Lanka. I, I just told them they have to release uh, some of their land because they're slightly over the limit and that's not allowed. And they better make it happen because otherwise I will simply disqualify them. There were very clear rules on the topic. Alright, so I personally think... Oh, and it's not even on the screen, there you go. I personally think... The victory from the European and African teams will probably... And I'm gonna do something radical here, because the obvious choice is red. They are close. They hold land in India itself, or well, they are going... Well, in the Indian subcontinent, they're gonna hold land in just a second. But I don't think they're going to win. I think that's the easy choice and I don't think it's the choice that makes the most sense. I think what we are going to see is probably... I think blue has a huge chance of winning. They have a very solid piece of land over here. So that is just so much value that they have right there. And they are on the jump to India. I think blue is my top candidate and right after that actually pink. It may surprise you but actually I, I think pink may be able to push pretty deep on this topic. I think there's a couple of players missing. Give me a moment, I'll be right back.
You know my school is COVID-19. All teachers, students, and their homes are in a quarantine. Jesus Christ, dude. Hope everybody's alright. It's a bit unfair that Africans started with the Great Conqueror. Um, honestly, in hindsight, I probably agree. When they... So, the player that... Grog, he's a, he's a really good player. He's been in a, lot, in, a, in a lot of these. And when he had to drop out today... You know, very shortly before the stream started, I was just like, fuck it, let's just give them the Great Conqueror. Back in the day, I was like, they're just three people, you know, what can they do? But now I look at it, I'm like, you know what, maybe... <laughs> maybe it was a bit too impactful. Uh, usually nobody's allowed, of course, to pick any Great Conquerors. Although maybe we should do a game where people are just Great Conquerors. Good work. Look at Dangle and Aiden. God damn it. <laughs> Don't let Felis Cartus sway your opinion. He may or may not be one of the players. Tangle is at 75%, my god. Getting the data, he's getting the safe game via... ...a Dove. Pigeon Express. Wait, do we know what the next Crusader Kings 3 dev diary is about? Before we jump into the... Uh, ...last third of the stream end of the... Uh, Actual game here. Uh, CK3 Dev Diaries. I don't think they told. Oh no, it's about war, right? Ah, it's a cool topic, but honestly, I. Uh, we need some clarification on some other topics. It's war, isn't it? That's all for today's. Uh, for today, tune in next week to learn more about how war functions in CK3. Yeah, that's about what I expected. Let me sway your opinion, I'm the almighty loser. Yeah. Lucky Lucas and Felis Cartus, both of them have been in a couple of multiplayer games. They have not had too much luck in any of them. But look at them, now they are together. There you go. Oh, I can't believe it. Dangle is almost there. My god. Uh, what about release date of CK3? Is it published? No, we do not know yet when it will be released. The general assumption that I have seen and that I actually also subscribe to is Q3, maybe Q4. So, you know, we're talking about the second half of the year generally. I don't... There's some people that are like, you know, maybe it's just 2021, but I don't think so. I think they would have clarified it. Paradox after Hearts of Iron 4, the disaster that was the launch of Hearts of Iron 4, because they announced it and then they were like, we, we designed the game in a way that doesn't actually work, so we have to redo it. And it took ages. So they announced it and then I think they were like one and a half years between the announcement and the actual game release and they have learned from that they're not going to do that again i think they only announced ck3 once they knew that they could deliver it in a certain time frame at least i hope so otherwise we are looking at 2021 but honestly i can't believe it i think it's going to be uh this year at some point not sure when though All right, hopefully everybody can load in. There we go, we did it. And with that... Nine... Ten... BMCT... There we go. We have now one hour. No matter what happens, the game will end in exactly one hour from now. Even if that's just, you know, if, if people lag enough, turn on the lag switch. <laughs> have like two minutes of actual gameplay time. We are going to go ahead and we are going to limit it so that people know when the game ends and, you know, can't talk around it really. 
bit support for Grey. Honestly, I've given up on Grey. <laughs> oh, I think uh, Grey is in a difficult situation. They got Ragusa killed so early on by Red. It, it was just like a drive-by as well by Venice because Venice just passed through. They actually didn't need Ragusa. They didn't want Ragusa. They just did it. And uh, the way I see it, that killed Team Grey. <laughs> Ascoldi has 82 min, zero retinue cap. Time to be a gamer. Take Discord, let's take a look. Hmm. Game says corrupted, please restart the game. Um, one from Iranian. I don't know, we, let's just, you know, there are more multiplayer games to come. I'm sorry for you that you couldn't join in this uh, in this game, but in the future it will surely be a possibility. Usually it just means there's like some irre irregularities. You should, uh, should just uh, verify the integrity of your files via Steam. <laughs> Alright, let's actually take a look at the wars going on. What the hell is the pink team doing? Still buzzer. My god, this has been such a long war. 51%. This one is irrelevant, okay. What is Africa doing? The team that has never won a multiplayer game, hasn't even been close to it, is currently at peace, of course. They are still defending against Croatia, and they are actively trying to take the province up here, which would definitely bring them the closest to Lanka, even long term. Even if anyone took, for example, Muscat, this will still be the closest province. Um, what is going on over here? We have a pretty decent situation for purple. Nothing in particular, though. going on for them. Orange, right. Orange needs to make a move that is quick and decisive. They're going for Farama and Dofar. Yeah, okay, so they're definitely jumping. And I think they're gonna take... No, they're just gonna take... Where's Farama? Isn't that just Egypt? Can't remember. Wasn't it like up here? Oh yeah, there it is, in the Zinai. Oh, they have to defend. Oh, Blue Rona is attacking. I did not realize that that was player team led. So we're looking at a war between Blue Rona, very strong, very good team. Terra is indeed one of the better players in this game, in this particular multiplayer session. And Orange. Yeah, look at that. All right, let's become a vassal of one of them. A vassal that is preferably not a player so that I can take a look at the... There we go. At the mo uh, troop, troop movements. Hmm, where are your troops? Ah, down here. Do we have uh, anyone that is a part of this war but not a player? Because if you play, if you join player characters, you potentially can infringe on anything that they can do because you know you get the same events, and if you answer them, then they can't answer them. It's a, it's a bit shitty. In other multiplayer games, and other Paradox games, they changed that so that as an observer you can go into any nation and can't really break anything. But not so here. This is painful, I've been in Bar uh, Barca for like five years. <laughs> yeah, that does sound about right. Basra has been sieged down for quite some time now. Sixty-four percent in Yilin's favor, and yet no actual progress. Terra started as the leader of the Warrior Lodge. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That explains why he's a strong one hundred and thirty-two personal combat skill, battlefield experience, dual experience times seven, and he is a renowned duelist as well. That's a strong character. That is a character that you want leading your armies. Look at this. Fearsome, flanker, unyielding. Blue definitely has potentially because they have an amazing setup for their armies. Again, <laughs> whether they actually are going to do anything is questionable as always. This is the oldest of the modern Paradox games. That's exactly true. Uh, it sucks, in a way. It's, it's still a lot of fun, honestly, even playing this uh, when we do a free-for-all where I also play. It's, it's fun. But my god, quality of life. Back then, we just didn't know how it worked. Henla, I hope that you can join us. I remember you have been a part of multiplayer games in the past. 
Hope that you can join us in the future. I love that this Basra war is still going. Now that aside, what are the Empress Lemiki doing here? They're just at peace. I actually don't really get it. Um, it was suggested that they might want to convert Boon or African. Actually, African was suggested. But I don't think that's happening. Look at this. She has no piety. 42 years old already. I don't think that is happening. Meaning that they probably... If I were them right now, I would definitely convert to Islam. And then as Muslims would go against other players. And of course against the Catholic front here. You can still go against the Mayophysites technically. Because you would have reach if you got close enough. Although nobody has done that yet. Hmm. My old character is still alive as a baron in Old Venice. He just turned 16 and a lunatic, lunatic ambitious strategist. That's a pretty good character. Too bad for us called either the game bugged out there. Oh crap. Wait, no, this is just the Ragusa wall. Let me actually take a look at the... Where the hell is the blue wall? There it is. So, Farama may be lost, but we don't know yet, and for some reason, the troops of blue aren't in Farama, uh, Farama, they're down here. Why even? That's not even a player. Hmm. The blue is trying to grab land over here so that they can go through, but for the moment, they already have land. Why even go for Farama? Would it stop? Would it stop? Orange entirely? I'm not sure. Is this the only thing? Yeah, it is actually. I, You know what? I thought for some reason that Orange already had some land over here in the Indian Ocean or in the Red Sea, but they don't. The Farama is their only shot at actually getting to India, meaning I don't think Orange is going to get there if Blue indeed is trying to dunk on them the way they are. What about Vicky too? I know a couple of people that have a very regular Victoria 2... Uh, multiplayer group like very regular incredibly regular and long-lasting actually But the game in itself is not suitable for you know these sort of stream and organized stuff and whatnot because it's such a pain in the ass Holy crap great game, but quality of life practically doesn't exist. I mean <laughs> actually horrible I I just you know it's it's when it comes to multiplayer games. I think quality of life plays a huge role in how you know, how often you're going to see it, how they are played in, in the first place. And while it is cool to see a small Victoria 2, you know, group there, I know there are several ones actually, several Victoria multiplayer groups that exist. It's, it's a nice thing to see, but it won't ever work on a grander scale, just because it is such a... Let's call it a rustic game. It's very rustic. Vengeance, what's Pisa doing here? Pisa is declaring war against Barcelona. Interesting. For no real reason, actually. I, I don't... Honestly. Don't know why they're gonna do that, but... Blue appears to be on a bit of a frenzy here. Or in a bit of a frenzy. They're declaring war against both green and orange. They're cleaning house at home, I suppose. Not sure I would recognize that. I mean, really annoyingly, you know, or that's definitely not how I pronounce the name, by the way. Even if you are a big fan of Victoria 2, which I can definitely understand, I do think you should understand that, like, you know, nobody's taking it away if they bring out a new game, right? So even if you don't like the new game, Victoria 2 stays around. Akeem, what the fuck, we had a deal? <laughs> I know exactly what happened here, so... <laughs> I know that in secret, the red team... Offered purple a truce. They offered purple a truce where they said we're not going to take anything in Lanka. But you don't attack us. We're going to shield you from the other teams. And we're going to give you money. Essentially, Red wanted to, you know, get their victory by simply holding on to land as close as possible to Lanka. So that Lanka would remain in the hands of the purple team which are tasked with defending it. Now, I noticed today that there was some talk in the purple team's chat. Let me just quote this copy pasta that they wrote. 
I will tell you one thing, Swiss cunt. I don't care about how much money they have. I don't care how powerful they are. I don't give two shits about who they know or how pr uh, pretty their concubines are. I don't care what they promised you and I certainly couldn't care less about their threats. Never ever has the glorious kingdom of the purple phoenix betrayed her allies and never will she. There is no temptation so great, no force so severe as to uh, force this great nation into making a deal with a fucking enemy. We will never surrender. We will never negotiate. We will fight them on the beaches and on the plains. We will fight them in the mountains and the forests. We will fight them to the very last one of their ilk. Until the one only re red thing on Sri Lanka is their fucking blood so uh, soaking her soil. So they created, so to speak, a, a Lankan Navy SEALs copy pasta, if you will. Because they came to the conclusion, we're gonna tell Red that we make a deal with them. And then we're gonna take their land. So there you go. And look at that, Hakim is now uh, asking them for money. I gave you 300. Team Red actually paid them to be attacked. That is incredible. I cannot believe that Team Red fell for this. Captain Simcoe has been in these multiplayer games since like the start of the year. And <laughs> yet he fell for the classic purple ruse. I could have I could have told him that purple would betray them without even knowing it because purple you know I mean come on now who makes a deal with the enemy who does that purple certainly doesn't my only wish is for Swiss can to no longer lag how's this war going blue is still in this war for Farama, not much progress, but I think they are going to win it. They have 13,000 just in their own troops. Yeah, I think that is winnable for, for Blue, although I'm not entirely sure. I don't even know why they declared that war. They, they should have ignored uh, Orange as far as I'm concerned. That's wholly unnecessary. I think good quality of life for MPCK2 is letting players change characters on Game Over. I mean, like, uh, how D&D Game Master lets players create new characters when they die. Agreed? But, I mean, you know, there's just so much that, that would make for good quality of life. Hot join, you know, resync, those sort of things, and yet none of them are in. Which, you know, it's a game from 2012, I mean, what are you gonna say about it? But yeah, I, I also dream... Oh, look at that, they actually did it! I can't believe they finally did it. Attacking for Hormos. Ah... Almost would definitely bring them in reach of being the closest nation to Lanka. Now that uh, the Republic will lose this. Oh, actually, they did, they did a piece. They took even more money. I cannot believe that Red actually paid them more. See? Simcoe and his team will have a hard time. They will have a hard time because they don't know of the ultimate betrayal yet. I think what would be quality of life for CK2 also, but of course that is something that you can't really ask for, uh, is just a situation where, you know, the chat doesn't look like this. But at the same time, I, I will admit, the chat in like Hearts of Iron 4 isn't much better in in usage. Like this one just pops up like here, and that's of course nonsense. I think Hearts of Iron 4 has like its own specific window here. But even so, like this is just pretty bad. You know, I can just take out people individually. Let's just write... Which one is Hakim? Where the hell is Hakim? Here we go. We got him, ladies and gentlemen. She stole my money. I think purple is literally playing all sides. <laughs> Purple just took money from Team Blue and from Team Red. You know, I gotta admit it. They're doing that in the smartest way possible. I can't believe that all the other teams are actually uh, falling for this. Paying Purple for literally nothing. And yeah, New Venice. So Kotra has converted. They are now Catholics. Also Secret Germanics, it appears. What are the other vessels here? Just Catholics. Fair enough. Oh, Captain Simcoe is actually underneath now. Peach is the leader. Of Catholic uh, of uh, the Republic. Why? Wait, what? Ah, I see how it is. They're actually vassals now. Damn.
Let's go back to the war of the blue team. I think this one is over. Did they actually take Farama? No, they didn't. So they just peaced out. What was that war for? And in the meantime, yeah, Orange has moved on. Farama was a completely waste, uh, wasted war right there. Orange, now in striking distance. In striking distance of India. So who's fighting who? Well, I mean, everyone over here, you know, they're all opponents to one another, that's the thing. They, none of these people like each other. Um, Grey, honestly, I don't think they're gonna make a comeback here. How's Green doing? You know what, we haven't talked about Green in a while. Green, he is still independent, but part of Green. And he is expanding just in this region. That's not gonna turn the tide of this game. How is the main Green team doing? And where the hell is your capital to begin with? They're just at war with Pisa. It seems fairly wasted. Yeah, this is... So, blue is just bogging down green and orange. They failed with orange. I think they're gonna succeed with green here. As you can see, green is at war with a part of blue, but this part will lead to, you know, like a drawn-out war. Honestly, if I were green, I would just give up. You don't need Corsica. Nobody needs this. Because you want to be down there at this point in time. And look at this, they're only holding land in the Holy Land. They don't even hold any land in the Indian Ocean itself. So this is a bit of a wasted effort. I think we have Orange uh, being the winner out of all these bogged down wars. Because Blue is also like keeping itself busy for no real reason if you think about it. They're just sitting here, uh, not even going further to the east. Oh, actually, ooh, I'm entirely wrong. They went further to the east. Now what are they going to do with it? And what is Pink doing? Is still at war, but it's such a painful war. I think Pink is in a good situation to be fairly close to India, but Pink does not have the amount of troops that it would take to actually push through. They don't have the amount of money either. Uh, if you are 2,000 troops, which, you know, I mean, good work, I suppose, but if this is your com uh, competition here, I don't think you're going to overcome that. And look at that. Now he's going... Yep, this is what I thought. So this is a very smart move by Blue. They are going for the eastern half of India because that will simply put... Bring them much, much closer to Lanka. If they just if they just win this, purple doesn't really need to bother them because they don't technically hold any land in Lanka itself. But that will be the victory for the players, and I'll be honest with you, it would be a deserved victory. And we already have Ratapudi. Who, who the hell are you? Oh, this is a broken this is a broken NPC right here. Ah yes, Didin Reb two six zero four six seven seven six. Amazing. Yeah, look at that. Blue just storming in here. They just want one of these provinces. That's all they need. They just need one single province. And there can't even be any aid, realistically speaking, by the Catholics because these are... Uh, this is Judaism. Yeah. Actually, I guess we, we got some heresies here. Karaite. Where are the troops of Blue, though? In Provence? No, that can't be right. That gotta be... Seriously? You have 8,000 troops here? Oh, is he letting his vassal siege it down? Oh, it doesn't seem right. But as I said, I think blue is coming through here. They are they are having a good time with pushing in here. If they actually take this, then, you know, I think that's pretty much GG. I, I highly doubt that red, for example, would be able to compete with that. Question is just, uh, how do you get their troops down there? Provence, still. Just on these galleys, I suppose. Alright, they are now going, so we're talking about maybe 15 minutes until they conquered the eastern part of India. I really thought that they would have some players, like some player-led armies of their allies down there, but they are still in Monferrato. Yeah, this doesn't look good when it comes to having a quick war. I really thought they would declare the war and immediately some of the players would have their troops there. But as you can see here, no such thing occurring. Damn. Technically, if Purple uh, noticed this, they could intervene by just having their troops there earlier, but I don't think it's happening. Hmm. What happened right here? Nothing. New Venice at peace. Not doing much. Yeah, no wolves go on any of those. So blue is definitely taking the right option here, but it's gonna take them some time. On the other hand, we have Yiland with their war, but it's gonna that's looking like it's gonna be a very long war. Give me some vessels, please. That are non-players. Thank you very much. 
Where are the armies here? Yeah, Yuland. Yeah, honestly, that's a solid army. A very quickly raised army. But what would be the move of Yuland here? What would be the move of purple, uh, of pink, I should say, to actually get close to Lanka? Right now, again, red is the closest with this province right here, but blue will definitely take this. I think it's a race for this, and blue, last time we checked, was very far away from winning that race because their troops were... Uh, then for Rama now. Nah, it's gonna take them too long. I think blue will take the eastern side of India. There is still a chance that pink in particular could snag it away from them, but I have my doubts. Wolfstone needs Corsica. <laughs> Why do you need Corsica? <laughs> That's such a waste of time. Uh, what about Iranian? Don't give up. There will be a time where you will be able to join. Sometimes it can be inconvenient, but you, you should maybe try to join the community games that are going on and see if that works. Um, I don't know what caused the issue on your end in this instance. And they're moving faster than I thought. Nuragusa? <laughs> what? Huh. Nuragusa. Of course. Makes sense. Venice? Ragusa? What is this? Just Muscat. Uh, how boring. Hmm. Look at this great conqueror. This, this is pretty nice. The great conqueror is having a great time. Barry. Let me check the Discord. Not that I'm missing any team shouting for help. But it all looks good. One proud New Yorker. <laughs> when is the next game? Um, the next game is actually only in 14 days. And it might be Stellaris multiplayer. I'm not entirely sure. Honor is satisfied. Yeah, look at that. They actually did take Corsica. Some could call it a waste of time, but honestly... The impressive thing about the blue team is that they have the time to waste the time. Because they're already all the way over here. They're gonna they're gonna take it all down. I cannot believe that no other team has seen this. No other team is actually actively going for this. There's this one here, I suppose. The Holy Fo uh, Holy Phoenix India is going for it, so they must be aware of the fact that they are now taking the east here, but in all honesty, I, I think blue has this in the bag as soon as they just take one province, unless purple actually decides to go against blue. You never know. The betrayal is real in these sort of games. Gulf of Aden. My god, it's so slow. Green, uh, green getting a comeback? Okay, let's, let's take a look at this. So, the green team. We have... Uh, him here, okay. Still not a, a vassal of the actual kingdom. Ah! Green is defending in, in a revolt. It's just such a... Honestly, every time I see any of these revolts, it's just... A, couldn't you have avoided it? B, if it is a council power revolt, couldn't you just said yes? Because all of these revolts just cost time. That's literally all they do. It is, it is a waste of it. The comeback that I'm seeing is Orange. I think Orange actually has a decent chance of going in, but I think that at this point they do have to communicate with other teams because we have a strong, a very strong purple empire lurking over here in India. Arlo's still all the way alone up here. Grand Mayor Murray. Hmm. New name. Still Thrace. I don't know. Hmm. Oh, Talos. Again, discount. Ah, man. That is... Wow. That is so unlucky. There's only 26 more minutes to go. Actually, like... 25... 35. Ah. Is it... Is it the internet connection, Talos? Is it... The CPU? What's happening? Oh, you mean grey, not green? Are they? Oh, they are, they're looking pretty strong. Going for Kaiba. It's not that big of a jump, but it is a jump. Blue incoming, Captain Simcoe. Captain Simcoe is rustled. Team Red is rustled because they know this is going to be it. 
If blue takes this, then red has no chance of retaking it all on their own. That is definitely a lost situation for them. And it was very smart of blue as well to declare all of these wars, because by declaring all of these wars, what we're talking about is essentially um, the enemy not entirely knowing where they're actually going to land and where they're going to, you know, brew up the, str uh, the, the trouble. Which land needs to be taken first before blue can take it? Blue has the choice, and the opponents are the ones that need to be, uh, be playing the guessing game here. Now again, we are a vassal of Yuland right now. That, that is all good and fine, but I want to be a vassal of Team Blue, please. Anyone? Oh, you are good, yeah, sure. Tell me about Team Blue. Ooh. Oh my. Would you look at that? The Holy Phoenix Indian Empire completely underestimated the power of one flank and these reinforcements are not going to turn this if blue wins this that should seal the deal wow so what has what is happening here right now is that blue has this one character it's emperor kugus the cruel and he has amazing stats and they just wiped the entirety of this realm that is so cocky and i'm actually impressed by Blue's engagement here. They were cocky enough to declare a war against against P uh, Purple outright. They were cocky enough to just go ahead and do that. And they won the battle because they have an amazing em uh, Emperor that can, you know, win it for them. As you can see right here, look at this. Unyielding, flanker, fearsome. How would you, why would you attack into this man? I don't get the logic behind it. That is just radically uh, opposed to wanting to win. We have the duelists here. Where are they sending their troops? They're just sieging, okay. They're just sieging. Blue has way fewer troops though in this position than I thought they would have. But this one battle was a huge victory. Holy crap. Tara is actually pulling it off once more. And also, I think the game has stopped. That is because... Aiden. God damn it, Aiden. We didn't attack into them, OPB. We were on the same province. And when we won, Hisama was defender. Oh! You had... I actually, I gotta tell you, that was super smart by Terra. So, when two armies are fighting, unrelated to you, but you are hostile to one of those armies and you park your army inside of the territory where those armies are fighting, your armies will afterwards always fight the army you're hostile to as the defender. Very, very smartly done. Ascoldia, it makes a lot of sense. But if it wasn't your choice, then that definitely checks out. But my god, that is... That is a very strong, very strong strategy. Now, I don't know whether they can actually win this, seeing as, uh, you know, we appear to have a collusion here between purple and red. And look at these troops here. Look at the amount of troop that is running around. I mean, that's a proud number. All of this is a pretty pr uh, proud number. But even still, I don't know. Oh my god, did they just lose all of these troops? Oh, there, there's no attrition here. I don't know what, what they would have lost it to. Oh, they wouldn't actually get anything because the county is completely looted. It was a good first battle, but I wonder whether they can actually keep this up. Whether blue actually can keep the upper hand. And again, we got some weaker... Essex is saying GG. I wonder why that is. Let's take a look at purple. Uh, pink. I keep saying purple. At pink. Ooh, they just took this. Pink is actually in reach of making some moves. You now at least uh, being fairly close to a potential z uh, victory here. Let me just... Take a How's the siege going? And the siege will run for way too long, I think. I think we're looking at a unified response. Oh, that's a good one. 76%. Oh, <laughs> oh they're actually going to do it. If they assault it all down, this war's over. Without another battle. They have to assault it down as soon as possible. Come on, just do it one more time. Blue actually does it. Oh, come on, Tara. You gotta take this one. Templar, please. Tara, he, he did it. It is over. 
Blue actually did it. They steal the victory. <laughs> they actually nabbed it. That is incredible. That is really good. But there you go. The instant war. Sin, uh, Sin Harlan war for Jungwa Pa. Yaltora's claim on Shona Madala. Uh, Ma I can't read. And then, of course, you know, there comes the revenge. But I don't know whether this revenge will actually come. Oh my god, look at this. You can't attack into this. I mean, it's a good attack, I suppose, because you got to, but... <sighs> Some people appear to be sleeping here, because not everybody's walking in already, and this is uh, a good battle. For Emperor Kugis the Cruel. Do we have anyone that I could jump into that is a commander? It doesn't look like it. Hmm... Yeah, I can't jump into any of these commanders. Look at this defensibility. Oh my god, and that's what min-maxing is like. You just put everyone in the center flank and then you wreck them. Yeah, this is a... You shouldn't have done that. I'll be honest with you, Purple, you should not have done that. <laughs> oh my god. Purple was in such a good position and then they all come in in waves. What is this, a video game? Does the game end now? No, the game will end uh, in about... Around about 30 minutes, a bit less, but in around about 30 minutes. And my god, they actually... Oh! I think they even had to dissolve their mercenaries or something? What happened here? Where did most of their troops go? They're down to 1,600. Minus 75%! <laughs> Tara with the actual moves. That is incredible. Unbelievable. Where the hell though? This is the one question I have. Where the hell are the player vassals of blue? What are they doing? Where are your troops, man? They have troops over here? Oh, they're in their own war. And now they actually join each other though. I think blue now coordinated that blue actually needs their allies. Because with 1.6k, you're not defending anything, and there are more allies arriving. Oh no, these are enemies, right. Enemies have now arrived, and sorry, I got to adjust my chair, uh, my chair there. Terra is one sly bastard. He may lose this again, but what an absolute snub. And here's so many more wars to go. <laughs> oh, I can't believe that. What a victory that was. Now they're just gonna sit on this, I think. I don't. If if the if purple actually moves out of this prob uh, province after taking it, it would actually like be the worst move I've ever seen. They definitely don't want to do that because they want to sit on it so that they can be the defenders. Giving the defense to blue is a death sentence. Hmm. Fuck your surrender. What's Tara? Yo, what is actually going on there? Surrender. Was he sent an offer? What happened here? Hmm. See all these wars. Where? Where's this army? Oh, maybe. This is still going on. A sieging, you know, a bit here and a bit there. A scoldier mad that purple moved, but purple is coming back. Timothy, thank you for subscribing. Just caught that in the corner of my eye. Oh, no, no, no. Blue, okay. Let's let's kind of talk about this, where this could go. Blue could theoretically have had it here had they had their allies' troops, which they didn't, in the province. Instead, it was only the liege lord, meaning they were whittled down to about 1.6k troops. Had they just stood there, they could have defended it and they could have kept it. This war right now will definitely not end with a blue victory unless they get hyper-aggressive, which I don't think Terra will do. I think even if Terra just you know, quick siege this down, he could have a victory in his books. The big question is, will the ticking war score end this war in time for the end of this episode? A episode? Of this stream. Because it is merely ticking war score, and we have a huge boost for blue because they actually won a significant, a very significant battle. Meaning the war score has to tick for a hundred years, or we have three years to, you know, three years have to pass, and after that, of course, the, um... 
war score could theoretically actually could it ever outrank it unless they lose another war uh, another battle i don't think blue can be properly taken out of this war what a very smart move although again i do think it would have been smarter had he been there with all of his vassals instead of just having to re-raise now but then again blue does have time if you think about it and also uh akim god damn it what is this every time god damn it hakim time to warn him in this <laughs> oh man oh there you go okay we did oh no oh no <laughs> i accidentally kicked hakim just now oh that was not intended Um, <laughs> shit. Wait, what? Oh, no. I didn't think the warning stacked. Oh, there you go. Shit. I just kicked Hakim from the Discord server because I didn't think the warning stacked. I currently am having trouble of reinviting him. <laughs> the jihad is coming. Oh no, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta figure that out in a second. Uh, I don't, I don't see a jihad actually. Holy Wolf from Armenia. No, his XP is not gone, just for the record. But I, I can't contact him right now, he's still in the game. <laughs> it doesn't really change anything. <laughs> oh no. Just a joke, bro. <laughs> oh boy. I need to uh, open my friend requests here. Can I even do that? Honestly, he's still in the game. Everything's alright, right? I just accidentally kicked a man. That's just what you do, I guess. Alright, anyway, back to the game. We, we don't have that much longer to go, and the game is still running. <laughs> I did not know that the bot would auto-kick after a while. I just, you know, so we have bots in the Discord, right? And we just, like, warn people as a joke. And turns out those warnings actually do something. Oh no.
Uh, he will get his rank back and everything. Because, like, that's just automatic. That's not actually deleted. I just by accident kicked him. Alright, I you know, when I saw I was like, fuck. I meant to warn him as a, as a joke. Turns out the bot does not know what humor is. Now, let's talk about this war, because this war is obviously still going. We are looking at a rate where I don't think this war will last until the end of the session. Uh, I'm not actually sure, though. It could technically last until the end of the session, depending on how much time we we make here. We need we have 19 more minutes. If this war ends and blue doesn't hold any more land, then that could spell the victory for red. But by the looks of it... I mean, blue is in these wars here even so. Hmm... Where are Blue's troops? Alright, there are- oh, wow. Yeah, Blue is showing- showing up in force. Daniel, welcome for uh, welcome to the stream, thank you for joining us. Uh, we have- th this is coming to a close here, just for the record, but we had, we had a game in a shattered world, Dutchies only. We had uh, seven teams that were starting in Europe and or Africa, and essentially the goal was for those teams of four people each to make their way to Lanka. Now, we also had a team here in Lanka, and that team was tasked with protecting Lanka. That team is doing fairly well, but it also counts as a winning condition to be as close as possible to Lanka. And right now, Team Blue is as close as possible to Lanka, and I think they may actually win it just by uh, virtue of being fairly close to it. That's really all there needs to be. Paradox should erase Lanka from CK3. Hmm. So that nobody can get it. Good day, Zex. Hello there. Howdy. I think that this could be a victory by Blue, and sorry that I'm- I, uh, I, I accidentally kicked someone there. The realm grows. I think Grey is giving money to Blue to screw over. Oh, Grey actually joined Blue to screw over. In a unified front to screw over Red. I like it. I like that a lot. Now, what is Blue doing? Where are their troops? Can they do it? They are on their way. Oh, I think they're going home, actually. Where the hell are your troops? Straight of... Where are they going? Southern Red Sea? Wait, why are they going back? Nobody knows. The top 10 kingdoms in this MP game? Hmm. You know what? I haven't even taken a look at these at these kingdoms. What do we have here? Sinhala. Not even renamed. Lazy. Doesn't get any points. Sarashtra. Doesn't get any points either. Songhai does not get any points. Coronavirus. Go to a 19 out of 10. Latium? Not even renamed. You coward. What is this called? Not even. Oh no, actually, it's renamed to Sri, uh, Sri Lanka. That's a pretty good name. Covid 19. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. Grovid 19. Ah, from, from green. I get it. I get it. Right, how's this war going? Still lasting? Still just running out the clock? Blue still has time to come back and actually end it in their way. I cannot believe that they actually took it. As long as it is under their ownership, this counts for a victory. What is the blue team doing, though? Yeah, Grovid19. I, I am... It is a good name. Although, it was already done by Blue Ronavirus. So who wins really? The blue team for assimilating you? Hmm. My god. Red tried to cut a deal. But what is any deal worth if you're still gonna lose? And also, my god, please speed up. We're gonna make it about... I mean, you know, having played 25 years in 3 hours with these big multiplayer games is pretty decent. So that is roughly where we're gonna end up, and I think that is absolutely fair, yeah. Actually, we're gonna end up even, even further than that. If I just keep pressing this plus button, which I am doing, just for the record. 
Tell me about this. Where are your armies? Coast of Tafar. Okay, finally. We are seeing the blue action coming over into India once more. Now, I wonder whether they are going to go for the neighboring provinces. So, you know, the AI that they kept declaring the war on. Or whether they are going to go for the actual Purple Empire. The problem with the Purple Empire is that Purple is now sitting on the province that is being contested. Meaning they would be the defenders. And with them being the defenders, they would not, you know, have to go up against the amazing defense stats of the blue Guard King. All of Christianity's holy warriors stand against you, European heathens. Bingo. Why are they moving away? If they just, if they just move away, that's, that's real bad. What are they... Wait, what? What are you doing? Why are you moving away, man? I don't know, actually. Are they faking them out? Maybe they are. Modena is over here. That is part of the blue team. So maybe that is the only reason why they're going. Venji, not really doing much. That is AI, of course. So not to be... Not much to be expected there. Akeem lagging behind. Captain Simcoe says blues incoming. The early warning system has warned Captain Simcoe and look at this massive fleet coming. If only Hakim could catch up. My god. Please. I can only try to anticipate this fight so hard, okay? At some point. You gotta catch up, Hakim. Wow, he's actually doing it. Incredible. Alright, let's go. This is the time of heroes. This is the time where we truly see who was made to win and who was made to lose. They are reinforcing the, the prov uh, province heavily here, but... Ah, uh, this is risky. I don't know. If I was if I was blue, I would potentially just ignore this and just go for any of these provinces. They are closer than red ever could be. I wouldn't even bother with this province. Not even... Honestly. I, I think this is a bit of a mistake. If they provoke them, if they attack them, even worse. Oh no, they're actually doing it. Holy shit. Wait. No, 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 they're not doing it. What are they doing here? Blue is kind of, you know, trying to take the tactics approach, but they are now, you can't attack into that. Come on now. I don't expect anyone to be that insane. They're just sieging now. And the sieging, see, I think actually that the smartest thing the blue can do, think about it. They don't have to win any fights, they don't have to win this war, they own, oh no, they're going actually in. They own the province. Theoretically, they could just like make some war score by sieging, oh my god, they're actually going in. Gustavo, a good time. No way. No fucking way. Wow. That is an insane leader character. Oh, there come some reinforcements, but will they turn the tide? As soon as the center flank routes, this is it. Wow. River crossing. Half the men. And they still won it. Blue takes this game home. Ray gonna be first in Sri Lanka. Hey, who's this? It's just a random man, you know what? Not even anything that I thought. Lorona and Grey together, you know, honestly, good for Grey. They're part of this. We had collusion between purple and red, and now gray and blue colluded. Wow. Are you kidding me? What the fuck? <laughs> wow. I cannot believe it. That is actually absolutely insane. Oh man, now we're, we're stuffed, but yeah, this is... 
I'm actually... I didn't... I didn't think that. The confidence as he walked into the province. I was... I was sure he would lose it. That's a battle that not many people would take and... Even fewer would win. <laughs> Incredible. Well, that's... that's a wrap, really. We have nine more minutes. But this battle... That's wild. That's a crazy battle. Now all they need now is to actually siege all of this down, which will be done if people stop lagging. My god. Lag switch turned on. Holy crap. Yeah, they just gotta unseage all of this and then it's over. Please. Don't do this to me. There was so much more lagging than is common. Actually insane. Great team coming for Sri Lanka. I mean, kind of. That is not a wrong statement. Alright, come on, just re-siege it. Oh, it's over. The war... Oh, it's almost over. Not entirely, actually, but they are in the defensive position. This war is over. Nobody can take their army. Not in the defensive, not in the offensive. Unbelievable. My respect definitely, I think, has to go to Taro. The balls on that dude. I mean, this character is amazing. I think we, we can all appreciate that, right? The heavy foot troops right there do so much damage. The flanker, of course, the unyielding. But then again, he wasn't even utilizing the unyielding in that battle. Actually, absolutely crazy. That's just wild. The moral damage he does there just definitely, absolutely pounces. Destroys his enemies. Oh, there is yet another battle. Let's take a look at this. <laughs> what? They must have... He must have retreated, right? Why did they... Why did they lose like this? Well, this war's over. Wow. And Terra wins once more. <laughs> I don't know why they retreated there, but I, I'll be honest with you, they would not have won that battle either way. Maybe it wasn't even a retreat, I can't tell. He just wiped them that quickly, maybe. I, I doubt it, but you never know. That's just... Wow. And now they're going to clean up the, the rest of it, I guess. Modena is going to take out the rest of the Indian coast here. And that is a wrap. Wow. I told you, blue is something that you can always bet a bit on. No doubt about it. <laughs> oh, I'm actually losing it. God, I wish I ever had characters this good. You know, I know what comes in the next episode of the Quantum Leap series, and my god, was a was a pain. Be on the receiving end for once, not to spoil too much. What a pain, indeed. And then you have Terra. Bet the guy's never been on the receiving end. He just destroys his opponent <laughs> wherever he goes. Great team, first in Sri Lanka. Are they standing on it? Oh, you're right, yeah. Great team is the... <laughs> Great team is the first team to stand on <laughs> Sri Lanka. You know what? That's a Matthew. You're gonna you're gonna get a special role <laughs> for being on Sri Lanka. Wow. What is this for? Uh, war for here? You're in the conquest of Nagatpia. Oh wow. Wait, it's for this one, right? Nagadipa, yeah. I don't think this is happening. See, I gotta tell you, right now, the way it stands, we have a uh, blue winning, 
but also purple winning because nobody holds anything in Sri Lanka. Head purple gone. Had Purple gone and taken Sri Lanka, they could have taken away the victory from Purple. But I think this way around, you know, Purple, I mean, they did hold their ground, but I think they would have been destroyed by the incoming wave of doom. Wow. <laughs> uh, the start save file, you mean in 1066? I, I can send that to you for sure, yeah. I think I have it lying around. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Claim on Amai. This is even a different war. But this game ends in just four minutes. I respect to Team Blue. Incredible. They had an amazing character that, you know, they brought up from the start. Very, very well done. <laughs> oh, I... <laughs> honestly. Even I didn't believe any more blue could turn it. After they didn't have their vassals there, I thought to myself, they, th they threw it. They fucked it up. You know, they had so many opportunities and then they fuck it up. But they didn't fuck it up at all. They go in, they clean house, they come back, they are the winner. Has there ever been... A greater team than Team Blue's effort in this. Bo going both against Purple, who are defenders of Sri Lanka, and Red, who are supposed to be enemies of Purple as well. And we end up with a s still a victory. For Blue, right here. <laughs> wow, Red sold out for absolutely nothing. Look at how they all jumped around. Let's, let's go back a bit. Green. Um... Maybe I'm blind, but I don't see any of the provinces. I know that sadly, Grovid 19 never came under green. We have a... Yeah, Green Salona keeping it together, but that is also about it, really. Then we have uh, Ray. Honestly, Ray, a valiant performance. They got definitely destroyed very early on by red, but they kept it together. Then the Africans, you know, I know uh, how uh, Luke, uh, Lucky Lucas and F Felis Carter's work. They haven't really done much in terms of getting to India, but I'm sure that they have been vibing this entire time. And that is also a good thing. Uh, what about... Pink. We haven't seen Pink in a long time. Attacking Senpo Jambai Taknang, the Sword of the Lord for Nagadipa. Oh. They're assisting. They're assisting. Oh, well, they have their own war, I suppose, but it technically is the same. Because they're both going for Nagadipa here. Yeah, I'm, I don't think this will be in the time limit. Just because there is no longer enough time, but... Wow. It's a bit too late by, by Pink, but a valiant effort as well. Honestly, I don't think that Pink could have won. Actually, honestly, let's just take a look at this. I want, I want to see this battle. Oh no. He hasn't noticed. He hasn't noticed the 13,000 troops. Essex walking into certain defeat. Yep, they're committed. Oh, this is going to be... I, I'll, this is a loss. You don't, you don't do this attack. Oh boy. Pink, sadly unlucky. What can you do? Felix Carters and Lucky Lucas are going to fight India. Look at that. Invasion for afar. What a cool, what a good meme name, by the way. Can't see their troops. Sri Lanka. New Venice. Is this it? Doesn't look like it. Let me check. Where the hell are these troops? Itaka. Ah. <laughs> oh, God. Swisskant is truce-breaking terror. Yes, this is allowed, but... I'm sorry for the guys that uh, 
We're just ready to reform that sort of stuff. I hope that you still had a good time, Felis Carters and Luke, Lucky Lucas, and of course, Lucky Max as well. I hope that everybody had a great time. But I think it goes without further say that Blue won this. Surprisingly. Dab, you're right. No one owns Sri Lanka, but being as close as possible to Lanka also is enough. And as you can see, in this very bloody war, Blue pulled out. Pulled through. Grey is the winner of our hearts. But blue is the winner in everything else. Howdy, Hello. I want to congratulate you to the victory. Uh, oh, that was an impressive war, a very impressive war. We didn't even Thank get you. Sri Lanka there. No, but you're closest and the time is over. So like, I set a timer to make sure that, you know, nobody can say, had it gone 20 minutes more. I wanted to make sure people know exactly when it ends. And this is it. You're the closest. I can't believe what you did there. Double the troops, river crossing, still a win. Come on, man. What the fuck? The, this is why you don't want me as a Viking. <laughs> this guy is just. I want to do a Swiss hunt. I actually made screenshots of the results. So I, I would appreciate if you posted them. That's, in, that's incredible. Them Congratulations to you guys. Uh, a valiant Thank performance. You. And have a good one. And that ends this stream. Grey is the winner of our hearts. But blue is the winner in reality. Purple, you know, they held Sri Lanka, but they actually would have lost it. My God, that's incredible to say. I thought I thought purple would have Lanka without a doubt, but they were in a risky spot right there. Either way, thank you so much for tuning in. I will see you guys later. Alligator.